it's Andy Campbell! It's in! Campbell comes off the bench to be a hero! A superhero! Breakthrough! It's taken a while, but it's been worth the wait for Cardiff City! Hey guys, and welcome to episode number 18 of the Andy Campbell Championship Show, only on Ace Podcast Nation. Christmas is around the corner. Everyone is jovial, except me. I know this, not because of the date, but because my kids are annoyingly hyperactive. I've got no gifts, and the stress is well and truly setting in. I'm your host, Sai, and I'm joined by ex-Premier League and Championship striker, Cardiff City legend, Mr. Andy Campbell. As usual, we will start with any other business. Then we'll have three main featured games from the weekend's rounds and matches, which we'll focus on in detail as well as talking all the other games. We'll have our two for two, where we select two players who've had a blinder, a nightmare. Andy will answer your questions, no matter what they are and what they're about, within reason. Uh, And then we will finish off with the soon-to-be award-winning 10 second segment that is fake Geordie bingo lingo where Andy teaches me something about his northern culture whether it's food a location slang a well-known phrase it's just an education on the show every week learn something new. always always learning si. always learning. always learning every day so every day's a school day every day's a school day see as I've never been up north this is fantastic for me because by the time I go up to Middlesbrough in 2020 It'll be like I know the place like the back of my hand. Oh, you'll be a, you'll be a local by the time you're there. I know I'd be I'd be like joining in with all the slang. I'd be saying, "Oh, have you been to this place? You've been to that place?" And I'd be, just fit in. You just need the you just need the matching haircuts. Yeah, well, I've got to speak <laughs> to my son about that. I'm not allowed to, not allowed to cut it until he says. And at the, yeah. at, the, at the moment, he's saying you got to keep growing it, like and growing it. And he said you got to go down to your waist like a rock star. So yes, that voice that you can hear is uh, joining me to talk all these subjects and more, provide his expert insight analysis, the one and only, the goal collector, the legend of the Millennium Hello. Stadium, the king of the north, Mr. Andy Campbell. Welcome, buddy. Good evening, my friend. How are we? All right, mate. I'm not stressing about Christmas at all. It's not, <laughs> it's not stressful. I got, I, uh, I, do you know how many gifts I've got? None. None. Do you know how many kids i got? Three. Do you know how many? I'm heady. It's, my, it's, I'm my heady. Son, it's my son's birthday on Tuesday, 17th, and I have nothing. So he could be in for a shock. <laughs> but there we go. Hopefully you won't watch this. But everyone should watch this. You can catch yeah. us, uh, you know, watch it in video format. See how that, that is how you do a link. See? Just linked in nicely. That's mm-hmm. why Johnny Wesh keeps badgering all these BBC and Sky producers. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> it's just, it's just natural, isn't it? It's just yeah. naturally, it just, it just flows. Just, it just did flows. it naturally. It's, 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 it's just flows. It's not even, pl- it's not even planned. It's not I even didn't planned. even plan it. It's like the opposite to planned. what I've got written down as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same every week. I, go, I get one thing written down and then I go off on some yeah, tangent about it. something else. But yeah, it just don't say. that's it. So yeah, video, youtube.com slash ace podcast nation. Audio at the usual podcasting platforms, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, wherever you listen to your podcasts, you can find us. And yeah, if you're an Android guy or girl, an Apple guy or girl, Windows, Mac, wherever you want, you will find us, video or audio. Today's show brought to you by a friend, Away Day Apparel. Away Day Apparel is a group of casually obsessed football fans looking to bring something different to the wardrobes of like-minded people. With football music and weekend carnage high on the agenda, they aim to bring you some exclusive products. They're edgy, controversial, but most importantly, current. From t-shirts, polos, shorts to hoodies, jackets and accessories, stick with them and they aim to bring you terrace wear that will turn heads and provide the cutting edge look we all crave. Nice and smooth, nice and smooth. So we're already into it. See how quick I did the plugs then? 
Exactly. Done. Bang, bang, Done. bang. I don't do everything that quick, though. Sorry. What's going on? I'm all over the place. Right. So, first of all, we've got any other business. Any other business. So, I'm going to go first this week because I've got a long list of stuff. I'm going to start with the, the positive stuff before I get to some of the negative stuff. Um, so, I watched the Manchester Derby. Oh, what was it, Saturday afternoon, uh, Saturday yeah. evening? Yeah. First time I've watched a Saturday evening game in a while. Uh, I don't always watch as much live football as I would like, the kids and stuff, and their own football. But um, I watched it, and I thought, wow, wow, I've got pretty much every decision spot on, which I thought was really nice to see. Um, the Rashford penalty, i got to say, I don't know how the ref saw it, um, and that's my one issue with VAR or in terms of which is not so much VAR but it's the actual referees I feel like they're getting a bit lazy uh, yeah. and they're not making decisions because they just think oh well VAR will pick it up and mm. you know it was a penalty all day long he just just barged him off you know barged him off the board and yeah. didn't, didn't touch the ball um, it still takes far too long for me though because I think for instance like the ref didn't give the pen and they played on for a bit um, and my issue is, in that time that they played on, the VAR people should have been looking at it, and then within a minute, like within a minute, it was clear it was a penalty. So while they were still playing, they should have said to the ref, it's a penalty. But it seemed yeah. like they said, oh, hang on a minute, we need to look at that penalty. And then yeah. the ref stopped the game a minute or two later. Then they looked at it. Then they made the decision. And it just drags it out a bit. Whereas I feel like they could have made that decision in the time that they... You know, they carried, they played on where the ref didn't give a decision. I totally agree. So it's the laziness for me. I think it's. Uh, the, I, I was I was delighted that they finally got something right because uh, I watched. Um, I think it was Thursday night. I watched Newcastle play Sheffield United, and I was just absolutely distraught with what, with what I was watching because I know we text all the time, and you know what I mean. Like sometimes I don't want to watch the game just in case these things. Just come out and yeah, the lines were made a mistake by by putting this flag up. You know what I mean. But then the the, the conversation you have on social media is is I've got a lot of Newcastle friends, so you know what I mean. They were delighted and they were all telling me that that the referee made the right choice. Well, he didn't make the right choice because the lines were put this flag up so that that the players stopped and everyone says play at the whistle. You're taught as a kid to play the whistle. These aren't kids. These are professional adults who look at keeping the high line. They, they look at keeping level with the next person next to them and they believe if they see a flag that that's going to be called offside so rightly or wrongly you know what I mean it's, it's, it's a massive grey area because yes they should have played to the whistle if they had they might Shelby might not have scored and then they might have realised that it was the interesting thing would have been, would have been is, if, is if is if he hadn't scored and then they called it onside but then what's the point of calling it onside there's nothing if the, if the linesman called it, on, called it offside he wouldn't have looked at it again because the referees blew his whistle and made the decision so then it just, it stops all this. I know he was onside and I know I'm probably contradicting myself, but the linesman's put his flag up. If he's told not to put his flag up, he's got, a, he's got half a second or a split second. So for me, is he redundant then? Is, is his job just for ins and outs? Do you know what I mean? That might, that's, yeah. my, that's, my, that's my concern now. What's, what's his role? Is his role becoming the same role as the fifth official or whatever they're called who stands behind the goal? But then I suppose in one way you could ch- they could change it slightly, couldn't they? And they could say, look, for linesmen, you only put your flag up for an offside if you're absolutely sure. However, mm. that's what they're supposed to do anyway. Yeah, so that's what he was. He was, he was 100% sure. He was 100% sure he was offside. And it was a close one. It, was, it looked offside in real time, I've got to say. Of course it, of course it did. And it, 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 looked, it looked offside the more I watched it. And even in slow motion, it was only when, when they started getting the lines out where I thought, where I thought he's onside. Or, or part of him was onside, or and this this is this is the grey area. You know what I mean? That which body part, if any, or if all, well, this have is, you got to be? Have you got to be offside? Is it is it yeah, your toe? Is it your head? Is it your armpit? Is it your bum? What is it? If some of you if if some of you is offside, you're offside. If it's got to be, it used to have to be daylight. That, yeah, that was, that's, that was the thing when I played. It was daylight. So if there's daylight between you and you and the defender, you're offside. There's no daylight anymore because it's just. Well, I like the daylight thing. Because it's like a, a kind of line, isn't it? It's like an imaginary line. 
where yeah. you can make a decision either or. Whereas this thing where, oh, his little toenail is onside, that's like, because that no linesman can see that. So then it's you're, just, it's just, you're just micromanaging like stupid mm. things and it takes away from the game. Um, yeah, you've got to play to the whistle. And I think what clubs have got to just tell their teams, haven't they? they they've just got to keep playing and playing and playing until the referee stops yeah. the game. Because, VAR, you know, VAR will sort it out, hopefully. So you've just got to play until the referee, you know, blows his whistle and stops the mm. game. Yeah. And it's the only way you can do it. And, you know, realistically, they should do that anyway. They know that there's a VAR. So as soon as John Joe Shelby keeps going, they should have kept going. But the problem mm. is, because he took it kind of on the run, didn't he, if I remember correctly? Yeah. By the time they realised he was still going, he's got like five yards on him. Mm. Because he's in full, you know, full sprint, whereas they've stopped thinking it's offside. Yeah. And he was very clever, man. I got it. You got to give it to him. He was very clever because he knew. Yeah, sure. He knew that there was, you know, if if I go through and I score, I just say I didn't hear the whistle. If I'm worst case scenario, I get booked. Well, that's that's the, that's the thing. But I was if Var goes, so, yeah, goes back to it, if Var goes back to it, he knows there's a goal. They can't not he, give the goal. No, but then then. You know what I mean? If if if, but then does he yell? At, so if he is offside, does he does does he get booked for kicking the ball away? Yeah, he'd have to be because he'd he didn't be, stop. Yeah, exactly. That's, you know, a... that's ludicrous, isn't it? But he's taken that risk, yeah. haven't he? Because he knows yeah. what we got video refereeing, and it was yeah. only a matter of time before something like that was going to happen, where mm. everyone stops, but the striker or the person to forward is thinking, "Well, no, I'm going to put it in yeah. just in case when they look at it, it wasn't a foul or it wasn't offside or." You know, whatever it was, and I think you know you got to give him him credit for that. I think it was very, oh, very of fair. course. It was it was extremely good attacking play, and I think a lot of other teams will, will do that now. You know, what I mean, if they see a, if they see an offside, they'll carry on, put it in the net, and then ask for ask, ask for that sort it out. I don't. I got to say, they they need to um, make it clear because I've seen a couple of game, games recently where it seems like the players are allowed to ask for VAR rather than yeah. the referee wanting it to be checked. Now, I was mm. under the impression that it was to correct a clear and clear up, you know, clear, uh, what's, what's the word? And mm. A clear discrepancy, say, or whatever, yeah. that the referees made an error. Um, what, and that it was down to the referee and the VAR team to decide what they would look at. I, or, they go down, or they go down the tennis route side. Or, of, and they've got three get, appeals. You get, you get so many. You've got so many. Captain makes a choice. That works in cricket very well, I think. Um, yeah. And I think once, that, that if, might... If you, what happens in cricket, though, is it, what happens if you lose? They have two. So if you, if you ask for a review and you don't get, you know, if it's not out, then... Yeah. Or you, you, you lose your review. So if you're reviewing for the batsman to be out and he's not out, or you review as a batsman that you've been given out and you think it's not out and you are out, you lose the review. And then mm. after your two reviews are gone... It's tough, and I quite like that. I think because I think but that then, will that will stop having this clog up of you could have like yeah. twenty million VAR incidents per game. Mm. But then, uh, but then the only out. only problem with that with that with that incident is uh, Sheffield United will have wanted to do it, and so will Newcastle. Yeah, yeah. because the lines have put his flag up. So it's if well, the lines have put his flag up, the ref should have called offside. So then Sheffield United won't have had to do it because Newcastle will have ordered. Yeah, it of because, course. Yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting one. Um, I, I'm not 100% sure. Like, like I say, I think from my point of view, I thought John Joe, I don't like John Joe Salvi at all. So I begrudgingly say that I think he was very, very clever. And I thought yeah. he did really well because he could have stopped when he saw the flag himself. And he did. Yeah, well, he's, he he's, he's offside. He's offside. He's offside because he plays as one of the things, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's just, it's just the way fact. it goes. It's a fact. And Fact. just while just while we mention Swansea, shout out to all the Cardiff fans who voted for Swansea in the uh, main featured games. Which it was funny because on Sunday morning, the, that poll, which was the third poll of the three, had the mm. least amount of votes, like for everyone. Um, and by the time the Swansea game had finished, it had the most, which I thought was quite interesting. I'll um, be honest, I I voted it, but I voted it for another reason. And I'm going to explain my reason later. So. Yeah, you say that. You, you... No, I'll, I'll, I'll tell a real reason. I'll tell a real reason. Um, 
just last thing I'll say on VAR actually, Don, and the, uh, going back to the Manchester derby, is it wasn't just the Rashford penalty, which we they got right there. I think it was two, maybe three handballs, which it also they also got right. There was one where Fred had his arms behind his back to stop the offside, yeah. and then he slid in to block it. And as he slid in, his arms come down because he's had to move his arm to stop him from breaking his arm just to brace his fall. And then it's hit him as he's put his arm on the floor at the very last minute. Now, to me, yeah. that's not that's not handball because he's, well, it's, it's, he's making well, every I, chance not to handball. Ball. Handball's supposed to be is your hand or your arm being in an unnatural position. Yeah. So if you're sliding, your arm or your hand has got to go on the floor to stop you from breaking, breaking your hip. Yeah. Or breaking your arm or banging your head on the floor. That's what you do. We the first thing if you go for, you fall over now, the first thing you do is put your arms down. Yeah. So if you put your arms on the floor and somebody kicks the ball at it, it's 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 a natural position. You know what I mean? The unnatural position is when you lift it up or you have it above yeah. your head or to the side. And that's you know what I mean? There was an incident in the championship of the weekend which I'm gonna talk about as well, which 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 was given as 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 handball, but for it's unnatural position. So mm. Well, for me, like when I saw that when it is when they show the replay of it, I thought, oh, they're going to give that. It's at home. It's in. It's you know, it's at Man City. They lose. <laughs> they're losing, and it's you know, it's clearly hit his hand. I, I think they're going to give that, even mm. though it doesn't fall into any of the rules. Because I think there's actually a rule being added this year, which says if the player's putting his like he's got his arm down as he's sliding, it doesn't count. So, I did think, oh, are they going to? They're going to give that, but they didn't. I think Guardiola feels very, uh, very hard done by at the minute with 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 VAR and handballs and stuff. And 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 I get his point because it's happening in big games. It happened in the Liverpool game. It happened in the United game. So it's it's the it's the big game occasion, and it's. But would he expect it the other way around? You know what well, I mean? You've got to you've got to you've got to look at both sides of the coin. Yeah, for me, I think. Um, some of the previous VAR decisions they've had against them. I actually feel that they have been a bit hard done by. Whereas these ones on Saturday, I kind of felt like they were right. Um, but yeah, you know, you've got to kind of, he wasn't happy, was he? But I, I think he was probably more frustrated with the performance than the VAR. The VAR thing probably, and the handballs just add to it, don't they, for him? Yeah, well, it's, it's circumstances, isn't it? It's, 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 it's moments, big moments in, big, in the big games, and that, that moment would have gotten back in the game. And, but he's, like you say, he's frustrated because his side's not playing very well at the minute. The results are, are rubbish at the minute, and, and he's unhappy with the way that things are going. And that's just, it's life. Indeed. Um, so just sticking with the, the Manchester derby, um, Aaron Juan Basaka. Signed mm. from Crystal Palace in the summer. Yeah. A lot, lot of money. A lot, lot, lot of money. Only a young man, though. He's about, I think, 21. Maybe yeah, younger. Ridiculous. Um, but he played, he was uh, a fullback for United against a player who, in our last show in the international break, uh, we said could potentially be in for the Ballon d'Or in the next couple mm. of years. Uh, we said he's probably in the top five players in Europe, if not the world, in Raheem Sterling. Um, and Aaron wan Basaka was just outstanding in every aspect of his game. He was yeah. great going forward, but like most impressive is speed, strength, and like anticipation versus Sterling in the one-on-one. It was just unbelievable. It was one of the best mm-hmm. performances as a of a fullback that I've seen in a you know a long time since since Super Kev in his pomp at Cardiff. Really, yeah. He's um. He's in a world of his own for me. You know what I mean? That that, that he seems to have everything. He's, he's a modern day fullback who's got pace, power, aggression, speed. He loves going forward, and I think as a, as a modern day fullback, you know what I mean? You look at the Cafus of years gone by, the Roberto Carlos's who just they, 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 their enjoyment was just going forward and bombing on and bombing on, and he's got an, he's got that in abundance, and, and he's got the license to go and do it. And you know what I mean? I'm really impressed with him. He loves the slide tackle. He loves getting. The fans excited with the way he tackles, you know what I mean? That he's he's a little bit erratic at times, I'd say. You know what I mean? Because if he catches someone with a slide tackle, he probably will get himself in a lot of trouble. But when he wins the ball, it, it just looks like a great tackle. And maybe he's just timing him so well. Um, but he's got he's certainly got a great future. You know, he's 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 signed for a lot of money, um, playing for one of the biggest clubs in the world now, and the world is oyster now, you know. That obviously the, the the football club seen a uh, seen a proper player in him, you know what I mean? That that probably United haven't had a fullback who can defend like he can defend since probably Gary Neville. And you're going back that's class of ninety two and that's a that's a big massive statement by the way. 
So, mm. but he's got a lot more attributes going forward, and he'll get, he'll score more goals, he'll he'll get more assists than Gary did. You know what I mean? So he's he's got he's got a real future ahead of him, and I'm I'm so excited to see where we'll go. What I like about him is that he is so good going forward, like you know modern fullbacks are. Model, you know, a lot of modern fullbacks are more like wingers these days, isn't they? But um, well, well normally fullbacks I can't defend. Yeah, well, you know what I mean because the, the wingers, the 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 wingers are being converted into a into a defender. But he he can do everything. He's got the lot. He's got he's got the lot. And you know what I mean. I can't see there's going to be many wingers in the world who will enjoy trying to take him on or get any joy from taking him on because he's got pure pace, power, strength, agility, good in the air. It'll be uh, it'll be very very interesting to see um, to see if he uh, if he gets outdone by anybody this season. Well, he's not going to face that many. Better than Raheem Sterling, but he is no. young, so he's probably you know he's going to go in and out of form. Um, is he in the in is he in the England squad already? Um, no, I think he's been in around the the frames and stuff. So you know, I fully expect him to get a get a call up for a friendly, up and coming friendlies, and then it's down to him to continue this form, like you say. You know what I mean? Form dips, and you know what I mean with him being a young boy. You know what I mean? Obviously, maturity and and things and consistency. But you know, he's got an opportunity, and if he can. There's always a surprise with England going forward in the Euros. Always it was with Theo Walcott, and, you know what I mean, and Gaza going 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 a long way back and knocking in the squad. So there's always one surprise with the England squad, and it could be him, hundred percent. I think I would take him because I think like you could actually, if you if England could take him, you know Alexander Arnold, uh, what's the Leicester boy? Um, Chilwell. What's his name? Chilwell. That's Chilwell, yeah, uh, and then. You've got those three plus one other. What a, what a set of fullbacks that is. And they can all yeah. defend. Yeah, which yeah. a lot of, you know, and going back to just quickly to what you were saying about the wing converted wingers, before United brought him in, if they didn't have Luke Shaw, so now they've got him and Luke <coughs> Shaw and that young boy. But before that, they had Ashley Young, winger, mm. who was converted. Valencia, Valencia winger. winger. <laughs> and there was another one who was, well, who was a winger who was converted. And mm. it's... You know, don't get me wrong. I think at a certain point, Ashley Young has done very well at fullback for him. Mm. I think he gets a lot of abuse and stuff, and and warranted sometimes. But mm. I also think he probably should have left Man United. You know, it's just the way for me that the way, the way clubs are going, side because um, teams like Man United, Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool, etc., that they don't defend that that much. So you need more offensive plays. You need more options. If that's extra wingers or extra quality from deep, it's you know what I mean? It's 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 the way that football's evolved. Yeah, and I gotta say, just the last thing I'll say about Man United now is that um after I watched the Spurs game and the Man City uh, Man City game, and um one thing I would say is I would not be in a hurry. Like I've been a massive critic of Solskjaer, massive because I thought he was disgraceful at Cardiff, he was terrible. And I couldn't believe that United gave him a job. And then obviously he had that run at the start of his you know, when he was the caretaker boss and you had to give him the job. And then I thought, well, now he's, he's showing what I thought, which was that he's a bit tactically inept and probably job's too big for him. But mm. after watching him versus Spurs and Man City and the young players they've brought in and got, they've got rid of the old, some of the older players, they've got rid of some of the bigger names. And, you know, let's not forget, they beat those, they beat Spurs, they beat Man City without Paul Pogba. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't be in a hurry yet to get Pochettino because I believe that Pochettino wants a Man United job. So mm. I believe that if he wants it, he'll be willing to wait because he got paid £12 million by Spurs to not take another Premier League job this year, this season. So, yeah. you know, let him have his £12 million and just see how it goes because the one thing that United have suddenly got is a very, very young squad. So if they add to that, with a bit of experience, you don't know what you know. Maybe yeah, Solskjaer, well, yeah. you know, Fergie was terrible for a season and a half. First season, yeah. So, was a game worth the sack on him? Yeah. He's, he's, Clubs yeah. are so fast at getting rid of but, managers. You know, maybe maybe they should give him a bit of more time. Yeah, I, I think he was he was probably he was probably a, a defeat away against Spurs from losing his job. So, well, I think if they'd got stuffed by Mourinho and then Man City, he probably would have been gone, wouldn't he? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So to, to pull out that level of performance with those young players under that much pressure is commendable, I suppose. Yeah, of course it is, yeah. 
Uh, so sticking on the man, a lot happened in this game is the reason. But um, another yeah. one which we have to talk about, unfortunately, because we've talked mm. about it in about I think this we what's this show eighteen? This is eighteen of this season. Um, so technically we done nineteen because we had that one which we lost, and I think we talked about racism in that one as well. Um, yeah. We've talked about racism at least three times, maybe four yeah. in total, if you include that show which we lost. Um, so Fred, uh, late in the game, I think it, I think it was still two 0 It might have been two one. I think it's two 0 Yeah. Fred's gone over to take a corner for Man United, and as soon as he's gone over there, you can see all the fans stand up and they start screaming abuse at him, which you know is what it is. That's football, I suppose. Hmm. It's tribal and whatnot. That's I'm all right with that to a to a certain degree, depending on what's being said. Um, and then he gets bombarded with like lighters and bottles and stuff, so he comes away. And then as he's walking back to take the corner after the referees picked up the lighters and whatever, um, you see this one guy doing like a like a monkey chant and mm. oh, I think he called him like a racist slur and stuff. Uh, mm. It's just disgusting. But what was most frustrating and upsetting for me was a missed. Oh no, I wouldn't. No, that's wrong. It's not the most frustrating and upsetting thing because I'm most upset and frustrated that there's like racism in 2019 in the British football top tier. That's what's most upsetting and frustrating for me. But one of the things which was probably equally frustrating is if you watch that video clip, when he goes back over to take the corner, in amongst all those guys mainly screaming and shouting and this guy being racist, there's a lady with a young kid trying to to get the steward's attention to take her kid (coughs) out of the stadium because she obviously... She doesn't feel comfortable. You know, yeah. the kid probably doesn't feel comfortable. And that's sad, like, because, you know, kids, mm. are, kids are the fans which are going to be there for years. You know, everyone remembers. The future, going yeah, future of football. And I say I've got a few problems with it and a few problems that, like you say, it's 2019. When's it going to end? You know what I mean? I'm, I'm getting bored of it. And that, this, isn't, this is me sounding disrespectful, by the way, because, you know what I mean? The point of it is, you know what I mean, that we all... The people jumped on the bandwagon, probably including the people who did it, by the way, uh, at Bulgaria and, and supported Raheem Sterling and supported other Man City players. You know what I mean? Sterling was, was stood in that corner area. Mm. So they're doing racist chants to their own player. Yeah. Well, Sterling I mean, was stood like 10 yards away from where this guy people was. Are, people are having to go at him. People are having to go at Raheem and, and saying that he didn't stand up for him. But, you know what I mean? You've got, to see, you've got to see from his point of view for me that I probably see the bigger picture and I think that the, the bloke's angry, you know what I mean? The few other people are angry. Man City getting battered by Man United. Raheem Sterling goes over there, what's he going to get? He's going to get abuse, you know what I mean? So he's standing there probably uncomfortable, awkward, you know what I mean? And well, No one knows what's getting said in the tunnel, what's getting said behind no. closed doors. And you know what I mean? That he, He's good mate with, with Rashford, you know what I mean? So there's... there's well, listen. the other thing is, mate, is um, Rashford, I think it was Lingard, said at the time they didn't even... They didn't know about it until they saw the clip afterwards. So right. to say that Raheem Sterling should have, because I saw people saying that, or oh, Sterling, he's, I was I see on social media, this one guy was saying, or oh, Sterling was saying about Bulgaria, and he goes on about how much abuse he gets. Yeah, he didn't stick up for Fred when mm. he was racially abused. And it's like, well, no, he probably didn't know. Because as far as we're aware, yeah. yes, there was people screaming and shouting. And you've got to remember, there's hundreds of voices screaming abuse there in mm. that corner and it was only as as far as we know it was just one guy who was doing the racist uh, you know motion and the and said I think he I can't remember what he called him but he called him something uh, racist like Sterling wouldn't have known that until afterwards so what's he supposed to do like and this is my point I made this point on the football podcast that I did with uh, Hayley from Fee Wales and Jamesy right at the start of the season is Raheem Sterling gets so much abuse from the media mm. and the people. I think we discussed it as well. And I think he handles it incredibly mm. well. And I think he's a big role model for how to deal with idiots and how to mm. deal with the pressures of um, media and the way the tabloids work. And I would send him around football clubs to speak to young players who are breaking mm. into first teams to tell them how to deal with it. Because, you know, over the last couple of years, how many young players have you seen have problems 
with the media stitching them up, whether it's Jack Grealish yeah. or... So if they had players like Raheem Sterling who could speak to them and they you know, they know they can speak to to help them through dealing with that, then that's only a good thing. I totally agree. I, I can't totally stand agree. tabloid papers, mate. I can't stand the media in general, but... Um, but totally yeah. agree. You know, totally agree. Talk Sport and BBC, you know, they're great. They they need the Andy Campbell show. <laughs> it's funny. It just makes me chuckle. Because <laughs> Johnny, uh, for, th- for those of you who don't know what we're on about, um, one regular listener, Johnny, uh, what's his name? Johnny Wish. Uh, he's been yeah. messaging Talk Sport and Sky and BBC and saying that they should have the Andy Campbell Championship show on their channel because it's better Beating the on, drum. Beating the drum. Because it's better than anything else on their platform. Bang on. Bang on. Not wrong. But, um, Bang on. yeah. It's, yeah, it's just sad that we've got to talk about this racism yeah. again. I, I thought Fred handled it really well, though, as well. Yeah, Considering so he got hit, he could yeah, have easily so turned around and got into it. Mm. But he just walked, you know, he just jogged up, like, walked yeah. away, didn't he? But like that's dodgy. What people don't understand is, I know, like I saw some people saying, "Oh, what's it was a bottle, or it was a it was a lighter, or some coins." But you try getting hit by a coin or a lighter from mm. like quite a either height coming mm. down onto you, or um, like thrown with a bit of venom from close. It don't yeah. hurt, mate. Especially if you're not expecting it. Hey, say, si, I got it with a uh, with a pie. All of them, you know what I mean? Like tomato sauce. That was that was tasty. That you know what I mean? There's there was, there was tomato sauce all over my face. No, I, could, I could taste it for ages. <laughs> you had to eat it, though. No, well, half time, it's a, I just took a little bit of the sauce off it. Yeah, it, was, it was nice, it was a bit warm, a bit warm, a bit warm at the time. But Should have done what Danny Alves did when they threw a banana at him and just eat it. I thought that was the greatest thing ever I did. I'm going back, uh, I'm going back in the day. I watched uh, Gaza play for Spurs at Ayrson Park and uh, all the Middlesbrough fans were throwing Mars bars at him. And he, uh, he put a couple in socks. He, he ate a couple. Just while the game was on, I just thought he was just amazing. Just He's amazing. A legend, eh? amazing. Classic, classic. amazing, Gaza. amazing. So, um, I know you wanted to talk about um, the how other sports are promoted compared yeah, to, yeah. That, uh, I, I think, uh, I think we all we all got in, in, in embroiled in the boxing at the weekend, and um, I think probably from Thursday, Friday, the way that the, the way that Frank Warren and um, handles him, you know, Eddie Hearn as well. Isn't Eddie it? Hearn, sorry, and, and and just and just 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 the way that they um, promote things. You know what I mean? That 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 football, I think, could be even bigger and better if it was handled in the right manner. You know what I mean? Because boxing's no bigger than football, ab- absolutely whatsoever. You know what I mean? And and, the, and 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 sometimes I think that the football authorities and the football governing bodies and the football probably football clubs think that they're happy with the way that it goes, but. You know what I mean? For me, I think football could be promoted a little bit better. Players could be promoted a little bit better in, 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 in the light of what we just said there about Raheem Sterling. And you know what I mean? These these players could become role models, superstars in the right way than like Anthony Joshua is and right other people are, you know what I mean? Because yes, you're gonna get uh, these comedy villain villains like um, Tyson Fury, you know what I mean, who people love to hear and people love him because of that reason. But at the same time, Anthony Joshua's got no no bad bone in his body. Um, but at the same time, footballers have the same have the same same feelings, have the same good values, and I just think that that clubs, chairmen, owners, uh, just football clubs in general could promote these kind of players, just so that absolute superheroes to to young players and families like that, like the lady who's who's who's, who's left that game on Saturday with a with a really bad feeling, but that's from one individual. You know, yeah. I mean, these kind of players want. Want to bring her back into the game because, like you said, she's the future, and you know what I mean. That, that I'm, I'm not asking for pay per view. I'm not asking for this kind of thing because I think that that side of it is distortionate. But you know what I mean. I think the other other sides of it that 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 the promoters get these things spot on. But then it's a business end of the day, and there's a bit of money, so it's it's getting well, that fine balance. If I was um, the Premier League or the Championship or the FA, I'd um, I would probably be wanting to get Barry Hearn and Eddie Hearn involved in that side of the promoting it and stuff because particularly if they were to go down the route of the Netflix thing that we discussed last week and have their own Mm. platform where then you're not going to have Sky pushing it as much you know they're still going to cover it because Sky Sports and that sort of thing 
you know, they're going to report the news and the results and all this sort of stuff, have the highlights <laughs> or whatever. But if, you, if they're in charge of their own TV rights and stuff, then yeah. I think having someone like, you know, the Hearns on board would, would be a good shout to, to take it to the next level. I think um, it would be good for, good for the, the football, for the league. You know what I mean? I, I, I think the problem we've got is, is, if, is if individual teams did it as, a, as, a, as, a, as an individual and just made their club even bigger and did it worldwide so that it'd be, you know what I mean? And I don't know. It's, it's getting a fine balance in, in it and because some teams wouldn't buy into it, um, buy into a collective one because individually, I think certain clubs could be bigger around the world than they will be collectively. Like the United, who are worldwide brand, you know what I mean? Man City, Chelsea, yeah. Liverpool. Um, whereas Norwich and Sheffield United, it'd, it'd, it'd be huge because of it. Yeah, yeah, I definitely think so. Um, the thing I like about Eddie Hearn is he um, is he's very good at what he does. But he also, I watched an interview with him the morning after, just on a, someone's YouTube channel. It was just, a, I think it's owned by his media company, but. But still, it was just him sat down, and he's very much kind of no bullshit. He'll just say what he's, yeah. you know, say what he's got to say. Yeah, I like is it. What is, and he's, um, yeah, yeah, I like that. So, that's any other business done. So let's move on to the, the good stuff, the big stuff, as voted for by the people. The main featured games for this week: Cardiff Barnsley, Swansea West Brom, and Borough Charlton. Wasn't it? So we'll go in alphabetical, alphabetical order as usual, which means we start with the mighty Bluebirds, 3-2, Barnsley. Neil Harris unbeaten. Yeah, well, tough start, I think, in, 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 in the game. We, we spoke about Barnsley, si, about, about how dangerous they are going forward. And I think they the keep surprising teams week in, week out. I think, um, I know Middlesbrough did it through the week that they, they take... Um, I think they took Barnsley for granted a little bit. I think other teams have done it. Hull did it at the weekend. Uh, last weekend, we spoke how good they were when they beat them 3 1. And uh, Barnsley went into the game probably with no fear, going into the game with a little bit of confidence and uh, went 1 0 up with a, I thought it was a very good goal. I thought um, I thought it was well played. Got great ball through and uh, Chaplin finished it really nicely. Um, but then after, I think um, sometimes goals can change games and not for the not for the good. And I think, unfortunately for Barnsley, that, that Cardiff then came into the game and and uh, I've listened to an interesting interview from Neil Harris about uh, about the Cardiff weren't weren't great, but uh, they found a way to win, and good teams find ways to win. And I think summed up brilliantly that. But you know what I mean? Because um, the, when they weren't, when they're not at the best, uh, and, and obviously they weren't at the weekend, um, but you're still there to to pick three points up. And um, Cardiff looked looked dangerous again off set pieces and crosses, putting dangerous balls in the box. And when you've got people like Aidan Flint going forward. How on earth, by the way, they can give that as an own goal? Yeah, I do, not, I do not know. Do not know. Even 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 Pelly is one in a minute. While I'll talk about, but there was there was nowhere near Diaby, and Eden Flint gets ahead of him, puts ahead of him. You can tell by his celebration that he scored. You know, it was a big goal for him as well because I think was it a landmark goal? 50th, was it his fiftieth, yeah. goal. So they took it off him. But you know what I mean? So great header as well, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was great. Brave. It had, it had everything. And got Cardiff in. Uh, back in back in, back in get in the game a couple of minutes after obviously Peltier's on goal straight after half time and you know what I mean it, it just shows that Neil Harris has instilled a never say die attitude at at, uh, at the City Stadium at the minute and you know when I mean, he brought brought Danny Ward on and straight away he gets his reward with a, with a, with a goal so it looks a looks a great substitution and then we obviously we've been beating the drum about Lee Tom, Tomlin for I don't know how long about that number ten and. You know what I mean? When you've got someone like him on the pitch, he can make things happen either creatively or, or goal scoringly. And you know what I mean? The technique he showed to to put the volley in was just excellent, phenomenal, really. So, you know, I mean, I'm not saying they deserve to win because I don't believe they did deserve to win. I thought probably I think that Barnsley probably deserved something out of the game. But when you've got players like Tom Lane and uh, and, and and set pieces like Cardiff having the dangers they've got, they've always got a chance to go and score goals. And, you know, I mean, the longer the game goes and injury time goes and, and teams sit back at you, Cardiff are always going to create chances and 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 and, and they the put the ball in the net at the end. And you know what I mean? And you, three goals is but defensively is a worry still. You know what I mean? I, I don't think they've got things right defensively so far this season. You know what I mean? Neil Harris has had a couple of games where he's let two in. Charlton first game of this, first game of his is, is his charge weekend again. So. He's got defensively still got a thing to to get right because he shouldn't have to go and score three goals at home to win a game. 
No, um, so I just say only a couple of real negatives for me was the defence, like you just mentioned. Um, I thought they started the first half, started the second half, they were very poor mm. um, defensively, but I thought they were quite poor generally um, for the opening of each half. The, the, I thought Connor Chaplin, I thought, was really good all game. I was very, very impressed with him. His mm. all-round play, his touch, his, his movement off the ball is really good. Um, because I watched the full 90 minutes, which I don't always get the chance to do. Um, mm. And yeah, I just, I was very impressed. I was impressed with Barnsley. I thought they were really good. And I still, for the life of me, I said this a couple of weeks ago, can't work out why they're down the bottom of the league other than no. they just cannot keep clean sheets because yeah. they, going forward, they always look, or they all, you always feel like they might score, yeah. um, which is, is, you know, is, is worrying in one way, but also, their goals are kind of keeping them in touch at the moment as well. Um, I think it's given them a bit of belief, Si. You know what I mean? I don't think it's given them much much more than that, but they've just got belief that they can score goals, create chances. You know what I mean? Because that, that's, that's not been a concern of, of theirs, you know what I mean? Creating chances, but how many goals have you got to score to win a game? The thing is, Ange, you wouldn't be surprised next week now if you'd like, you check the results of full time and you saw like Barnsley 4, whoever, nil. And they give someone a complete thrashing, just because yeah. of the way they've been playing going forward. Um, yeah. I thought Aiden Flint was very, very good. I thought he had a real good game. I thought maybe, maybe if you were being ultra critical, he was at fault for the first goal because I feel like he was a little bit slow to react from the run through and that. But I think that. Was yeah, well, I don't, I don't, think, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's his game. Uh, no. if I'm honest, you know what I mean. I think, um, I think, but it's a good run, clever run, clever yeah. run, a good finish, you know. So, well, I'm not going to be ultra critical on it. No, but, no. Uh, like, like, like you say, you know what I mean. But sometimes you've got to pretend to catch him offside by having a better line, you know what I mean? Because he's 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 running behind you. So, you know, what I mean, sometimes you've got to give it, got to give the centre forward a little bit of credit. And, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so yeah. Um, I thought Lee Tomlin was excellent, but you know we've excellent been again, saying yeah. that he set up Danny Ward's yeah. goal with a nice little bit of vision. Um, Danny Ward, ten ten games he's played this year, he scored five. Um, mm. So if he's fit for me, he's got to start over Medin. I'm not a massive fan of Medin, as I've said before. He's done, he's he's done all right for Harris since he's. Come in. I give him. I will say that he's done pretty well. For he's Harris. Neil Harris's type of player, though, man. Because we, we, yeah, we like said this Morrison, about, about it? Steve Morrison. Yeah, so he, he likes that big target man and, and people running and off, and that's, that's the way he does it. And to be fair, he's he's given himself an opportunity to carry this carry this on and, and Gary Gary to keep playing because uh, because of how well the results have gone. Yeah, and I got to say, Cardiff look dangerous going forward again. There was a period under Warnock towards the end. Where Cardiff would get the ball and you just you just kind of felt like you were stuck in midfield constantly. They weren't getting it out yeah. wide. Mendes Lang looks dangerous again. Yeah, he's, um, well, it's some of the balls are put in the box. You know what I mean? The that Aiden Flynn starting to score goals and and, and we're starting to score set pieces and it wasn't happening. And sometimes managers can take clubs as far as they can. And I, I did feel sorry for Neil at the end, but and the new managers come in and Neil was on um, goals on Sunday and he, he was very honest that he left the new manager with her. With a good squad and potential to move further up the further up the table, and said uh, if they left a couple of weeks ago, Cardiff would have been would, would be top of the league by now. And you know, what I mean, it shows how much belief he's got in, in the squad, and mm. same belief as we've got. Or we've got, you know, what I mean, we, we know on paper how, how strong and how good the team is. He just has to perform, and at the minute they're performing, but I still think there's more to come from them, and still another gear or two. Yeah, I got to say, I was uh, watching it, and I was all these wonderful crosses are coming in, the good free kicks, good set pieces, which was another thing which had been very lacklustre this year is the delivery from set piece. Mm. Um, and I was, I could only think Glatzel must be looking at this thinking, where are all these crosses and set pieces when I was playing yeah. up front? Because yeah. that's his game. That's yeah. what he needs. And he was yeah. getting his feet all the time. But look at some of the other centre forward side in the league. And, and I think... Um, if we could just, if, if we could just have him, if, or they could have, you know what I mean? There's, there's so many players around the, the league at the minute who, um, who are scoring regular goals, and I think um, 
I think if Cardiff had that had that 20, 25 goal centre forward, you know what I mean? The difference would be phenomenal, whether it be. Oh yes, mate, definitely. That's the one thing. Well, I I keep banging the drum, <laughs> but Jay Bowen, mate, I think would. Uh, oh, uh, I'd be happy well, to uh, we'll we'll go on about him soon. But is um I'm um, it's getting um I won't say boring because that's not, that's really disrespectful. You know what I mean? But it's getting ridiculous, like, I, mate. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be I'm gonna be absolutely distraught if the um. If he leaves the championship, I'll be yeah, honest. Yeah, um, I will. Uh, and the thing is, on that side, the more goals he scores, the less likely it will be that he stays in this league. Because you yeah, know, what I mean, do you he, think he's, they're going to struggle to hold him? No, uh, it's impossible, mate. For me, it's impossible, impossible to keep him at, 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 at that football club. It's got to be. I think the only way they were going to possibly keep him is if they were in like the top two, yeah, breaking, well, yeah. broken away from the rest of yeah. the group and. And I think that, that 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 ship sailed with with what's going on in that league at the minute. Anyway, with those two, it's, it's just crazy league, isn't it? Silliness, silliness. So yeah, let's uh, move on then to the to the mighty Borough with a big win against Charles. Huge win, yeah, huge win. Um, just be before you, the, just before you start, mate, I was going to say massive pressure on Woodgate because I think it was Thursday or Friday. Story mm. out: uh, Neil Warnock linked to the job after we discussed yeah. it last week. There was yeah. a big, big, uh, you know, big newspapers were reporting it literally mm. 24 or 48 hours before this game. So, he, yeah. you know, make no mistake, he was under pressure. He was, and to be fair, it was probably the best performance we've had all season. Um, he, he, by hook or by his crook, he, he, he picked the right team. Um, he put a young, few youngsters in, this, in the side. Um, he had uh, a young right back called uh, Spencer, who I thought was absolutely outstanding. He had uh, a young left back called Coulson. And for me, both players just set the tone of the game and had energy to burn going up and down both wing backs. Young pairs in goal, we give, man, uh, we give um, so many plaudits to last week for uh, a performance in a 4 0 four nil defeat. And got a really good start uh, from um, from George Savile after a minute. You know what I mean? It was a decent save and then a follow up. And I was really, such, really disappointed with Charlton. You know what I mean? Joe Ledley started. Lyle Taylor was back in the squad and was on the bench. Came on at half time. Needs more games. He just looked looked a little bit off the pace for me. Um, and same as George, George just looked. Um, I felt sorry for him really because he he said he was fit, says he was match fit, but there's a difference between match fitness and match sharpness. And George just looked out off the pace and and came off came off at half time. And I felt really sorry for him. He just needs more games. And and Charlton find it really hard at the minute. And for how good the started time we're outside the playoffs and all the plaudits we were giving him. They fell down that league like a stone at the minute, and uh, and they're falling really, really dramatically. And and I think with Lee bringing in, um, with bringing in Joe and bringing in a couple of lads back in from the squad and, and trying to improve the squad because they are falling really quickly. That they need to change their fortunes around really quickly because Middlesbrough beat them one nil for me should have been two, three, four, but Middlesbrough never really looked like getting that second second goal, which uh, which really would have made things a little bit easier on the manager and. And give the fans a little bit of breathing space and the players, but deserved the win. And um, but with a couple of uh, tough games coming up, they play Forest on Tuesday, they play Swansea on Saturday. So there's an easy game. Uh, but mm-hmm. uh, two away games, you know what I mean? Swansea are going to be hurting. Forest are going to be hurting after what happened on Friday night. So you know what I mean? They've got some real tough games coming up, and that one win was massive, of course, but. You can only look forward to the next game, and if you win one game but then lose lose the next two, you you're right back where you started again. So they need to pick some points up away from home because you can't just win your home game. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so just before I talk about Middlesbrough, I just wanted to say, um, you know, we've we've been very fair on this show to everyone, and um, mm. and we've really, you know, we've bigged up Lee Bowyer, yeah, and I've really talked about how impressed I've been with his tactics. I think they've been outstanding all season. Um, so he's still he's still up there. If if we had to, if we had to name. A top three manager of the season, he would, still, he would still be up there. Yeah, because absolutely. Of, because of the way he's handled the championship so far this season. And that's not saying Barnsley haven't. That's not saying Luton Town haven't. You know what I mean? But they've they've handled it the best out of the three and they've done really well. So, yeah. you know what I mean? But but he's also, he's just, he's, he's struggling at the minute with something well, and, I and I don't know what it is. Like, I, what's impressed me previously has been how he, he's adapted to different game situations and changed things around if he's needed to, changing the shape, changing the tactics. But I thought he got it wrong on Saturday for, mm. for, for the main reason being you had Lyle Taylor of returning after three months out. Um, and then you had 
Joe Ledley, who hasn't played for since last isn't year. It's been for over a year, longer, 12 months, yeah. yeah, 16 months or something. Um, now, I know they played you know, either half, but I feel like both would have been better served to get 20 minutes at the end than having, you know, having Lee, uh, Joe start. And I felt like he was, like you say, off the pace. He was struggling. Mm. I feel like he would have been better to get, just build him up with 20 minutes at the end of each game for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, I don't feel like that did him a great deal of good from a confidence point of view, from the team's point of view. Um, and Lyle Taylor, yes, you know, they were chasing the game, so they were obviously going to bring him on at halftime. But I do think, because he's been out for so long, you can't expect a young striker who's been out for three months with an injury to, you know, if an injury keeps you out for three months, it's a pretty serious injury. Hmm. But we've said, they'll say, you know, I mean, the pressure on this young, young lad's shoulders to, you know what I mean, ever since he's, he's been injured, you know what I mean, they've struggled a little bit, you know what I mean, his goals kept them where they were in the league, you know what I mean, when the big league United scored the winning goal, um, you know what I mean, the goals he scored has kept them where they are and, I just hope that he handles or they handle him correctly because throwing him straight in at half time and expecting him to go and go and save our season, go and get the equaliser. It's unfair a little bit, you know what I mean? Like you say, you know what I mean? For me, still in the game, 10, 15 minutes to go, throw him on. Go and do 45 minutes worth of running in 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. You know, there's the instructions. You know what I mean? We're still in the game. Go and run your little socks off in 15 minutes. You've been out for three months. Cameo yeah. role. You know what I mean? Regardless how many reserve games, how many behind closed door games he's played they're not the same you can't replicate the feeling of that game and the longer the half goes you know what I mean been blowing out of his backside bless him you know what I mean and and and, and middles were shut off shop and so, the thing is for both of them as well yeah it, for both of them as well is is the the risk of uh, of, of injury as well to, mm. to play 45 minutes like that in the championship of all leagues you know it's tough um, I thought middles were were very good um, I was very impressed with uh, Hayden Coulson. Coulson, yeah, left very, back. very he's, good. He's been excellent every time I've seen him. He's 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 taken over. Obviously, George Friend is a captain, and and I'll be honest, I'll be. I think he'll struggle to get back in. So you know what I mean? If you if you're old enough, you're good enough. If you you know what I mean? If you're good enough, you're old enough. Whatever. You know what I mean? You you judge on performances, and you know what I mean? He's 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 been excellent since he's come involved this season, and I thought Spence was a a breath of fresh air on the other side as well. Yeah, and. Um, Obviously, they scored very, very early, which I probably settled a few, you know, a few nerves playing at home under pressure yeah. and not been playing great. But they have been better the last couple of weeks. Um, home, home, mate. I think, um, and I said it about Derby that they were different, different animal away in Middlesbrough. You know what I mean? That they probably roll over and, and and get tickled a little bit, but at home, the you know what I mean? The solid, they're hard to break down. They don't score many goals, but they don't seem to let many in. So, you know what I mean? I think it'll be. Uh, Hopefully, be a, a tougher place for teams to come when the bigger sides come. Yeah, and I think it comes back to like what we were saying about Solskjaer at the start of the show, mate. Is Woodgate's a, a, he's a young manager. You've got to give him time to to get to grips with it. I know Middlesbrough can't afford to go down, um, and they can't afford to be relegated. But you've got to give these guys time to to build their side, build their tactics and how they want to play and mm. you know it's going to take time when did he I've come said, in I've he said, came I've in I've in the s- summer didn't he so yeah I've said, I've said all alongside for me uh, I think the whole thing would, 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 would look rosy if somebody came out from the football club and said our aim this season is to avoid relegation yeah so if his, if his remit is to avoid relegation so far he's doing it not in the bottom three he's achieving what the club wanted to achieve you know what I mean so It'll take the pressure off his shoulders a little bit. Well, remember uh, about a month back, I said to you there was um, that thing on Talk Sport on like a Friday night, and they were saying, uh, or his other Talk Sport guy, and they were saying it was Middlesbrough versus Birmingham, I think it was. And then the the, per- the commentator or the, the radio host said that uh, they'd had it from the owners of the two clubs that they both wanted playoff places this year and I was thinking both these clubs should just be focused on staying up mm. nothing else got to be realistic couldn't, couldn't you, got, you, got, you got to be realistic and you know what I mean that's not just that's just that's not just Middlesbrough by the way you know what I mean there's 
you're realistic your aims of getting promoted you're realistic of the teams who get relegated you've got to be realistic you've got to, you've got to look at what's what's in and around that championship at the minute and you know what I mean we all knew Leeds were going to be in and around there we all knew it you know what I mean so you, your spaces then get limited straight away you know what I mean that there's a few teams that surprised us and there's either way but you just it just it, spaces run out because there's too many fighting for top six to run out well, the thing is, you look at those two teams I mentioned there, Birmingham and um, Borough, is if their managers, uh, if their owners come out and they say, uh, our aim is to stay up this year, that's the, that's the goal for the season, then like you say, Wood, uh, Woodgate's doing a fantastic job. Yeah. Birmingham manager's doing a pretty good job. He's doing a great job. But if the chairman comes out, mate, at Middlesbrough and he says... Uh, we, 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 we want to get in the playoffs then at the end of the season then they both gets, doing a Wood, bad job aren't they Woodgate's got he's got to get the sack from the achievement unless he gets yeah. in the playoffs because so he hasn't hit his targets exactly I mean, any, any, any person who works at any level of, of, of targets or performance management you know what I mean and you don't hit your remit then surely you've you failed and you've got to look elsewhere for a job well yeah you look at that Birmingham 13th and Borough uh, 19th so I mean how you know they're doing a great job if they're looking to stay above relegation totally if great. they're gaming for the playoffs they're not they're failing um, and mm -hmm. that creates an issue which is an unneeded issue as well may I add it's mm -hmm. um, yeah I don't like that uh, next up mate <coughs> so I've got a feeling that it was a lot of Cardiff City fans who voted this one in but maybe people just wanted to you know I'm happy to assume that people we've got some West Brom followers welcome um, and I'm welcome. I'm happy to have you on board. Bring yeah. You, bring your friends. Exactly. Um, and hopefully, hopefully, Swansea understand um, what's going to get said is not personal. Yeah, of course. Uh, and it's, it's like we said, uh, we, I've been a massive fan of, uh, of how, how they play and how they've done it. But you, you look at the bigger picture side. So before the game, they'd. They hadn't lost. They hadn't won in four. Sorry, they got beat by Fulham. They drew with Huddersfield. They lost against Millwall. They lost against. Uh, they drew against Sheffield Wednesday. So they were in um, a bit of a, a dubious form and, and playing against the side who won the won the previous six. Um, Slavin Bilic, oh my lord, he's 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 inundated with um, attacking players. Um, he's got Matt Phillips, Dean Garner, Pereira playing absolutely fantastically well, and it's scary how a how a front four and He's revitalised Robson Carnell, by the way, because he, he started the season with him out of having, having him on the bench. He started with uh, uh, Zahar playing up front as a lone striker. He then uh, reverted to playing Charlie Austin. Um, he's decided that Robson Carnell is, is his main number nine with those three behind. And Charlie Austin didn't get on at the weekend. And, and Robson Carnell scored himself a goal. <laughs> Pereira scored himself a goal and had, had assists all, all afternoon. Um, and uh, Phillips as well, you know, and Dean Garner. There was a piece of skill in the uh, out wide where he, he juggled the ball on his head and then uh, and then sent the lad for a bag of chips. And I just thought it was just, you know, it, it was they were joy to watch going forward. They were joy to watch defensively. They look solid. You know what I mean? I, I honestly can't see them stopping this um, this train because they're on this journey where it just looks. I just can't see anyone stopping them. Sigh, and you know, I mean, going forward, you know what I mean that that. What three goals in the first half, two goals in the second half? They had nineteen shots on goal. It was just it's never ending, it's relentless. You know what I mean? And and to do it against um, a good side, because Swansea are no mugs, by the way. You know what I mean? And this yeah. isn't. You know what I mean? And this isn't. I I could go down the route of saying Swansea's defence was all over the place. Swansea's defence was ripped, was torn apart, but torn apart in the right possible way by a front four who was just on on top form. And this isn't just a one-off, by the way. You know what I mean? Pereira has got to be the best player in the championship currently on current form. And when you've got someone like that who can who can turn in performances like he is and, and set goals up like he is, make football games look as easy as he is doing. You know what I mean? That West Brom have got themselves an absolute find and, and they're so lucky to have him. And, and, um, and you know what I mean? The score five could have been seven or eight. Um, Swansea were lucky at times to keep the score down and had a couple of chances themselves, but I thought that that, that it was men against boys, and you know, I mean, Swansea just weren't weren't at the races, and 
we, we said this side about it was before they played Cardiff they were on a really bad run and then they beat Cardiff and now they're on a worse run you know what I mean so they're you know what I mean and that was when they were in the playoffs and now what they're, they're hanging in at 11th place and you know what I mean the Swansea fans who, who follow me on Twitter or who, who probably don't follow me but abuse me on Twitter about that, that, that they were ahead of Cardiff well tides have turned this weekend and they're now one point behind them and if, if they want to go down the route of uh, they're ahead of Middlesbrough they're going to be ahead of Middlesbrough all season unless they get relegated so you know what I mean so if that's if, they, if they're happy with that or they're happy with just being ahead of certain teams then, then so be it but the league season is a marathon not a sprint and regardless of what people say of the one-off result the league table doesn't lie and I've said this for the past so many shows about Middlesbrough you know what I mean that it's the same with Swansea. It's the same with Cardiff. You know what I mean? You're only as good as your last game. You're only as good as the league table tells you. You know what I mean? The league table tells the truth. Leeds United and West Brom are the two best sides in the league. Fact. The three best, the three worst sides at the minute are the three sides in relegation. And Swansea are, are finding things really difficult at the minute. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> West Brom were outstanding. And I think that they could run away with it if they keep going the way they're going because they've got so many players who are so good. Oh, strength and um, depth side for me. Strength and depth side. And look, all, over the, all over the place. Matt Phillips, uh, Kyle Edwards, uh, Pereira were all amazing. I was like, it's so good. Um, Hal robson Khan, who's the best finisher in the league at the moment, um, oh, just, just takes, takes every chance. But um, one player who I think deserves a mention uh, is Semi Ajay a G. He scored the first goal, yeah. I didn't, want to, um, I didn't want to be disrespectful and get his name wrong. Well, the reason I wanted to give him a mention, um, and I'm going to mention Kadeem Harris as well, is because these two players were on the fringes of Cardiff squad. They weren't really playing. Um, and they, took a, they gambled on themselves to go somewhere else and play regular football. He went to Rotherham. Did he go to Rotherham? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think he went to Rotherham and then he obviously went to West Brom. He jumped back up, yeah. So. But they gambled that if they played regular football, they were good enough. And they've both proved that. Um, and I think they deserve tremendous credit for that because it's easy to stay. You know, Cardiff's a relatively big club. They could have stayed there and just collected the money, maybe hoped to get into the squad eventually. But they wanted, <coughs> you know, they wanted to play rather than just... Um, you know, just happily sit on the bench, not even. Well, I, like, I like that side. You've got, to, yeah. you've got to challenge yourself. Sometimes you've got to take one step forward, to yeah. take two, to, one step backwards to take two steps forward, and that's what these kind of players are doing. And back yourself a little yeah. bit because the manager yeah. doesn't fancy you. You've got to back your back your own ability sometimes. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I thought uh, Matt Phillips was so so good. Um, but he's a Premier, he's a Premier League player, si. Oh God, yeah. They've, they've got Premier League players in the Championship side. It's just it's ridiculous. Look, um, you know, people will say that because I'm a Cardiff fan, I'm only saying this because it's Swansea. But I'm not, and I think we've shown all season that we've been fair to Swansea or Leeds or whoever. Yeah. It doesn't matter. We'll just say it as we see it. And when Swansea have been good, we've said it. And when they haven't, they act, we've said it. Now well, that's what my, my comments say. My, my comments say we're all all pro West Brom. Yeah. The, result, the result speaks for itself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Regardless how good or bad Swansea were, West Brom were amazing. Yeah, and, and, absolutely. And my, 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 my only uh, comment I'm going to make about Swansea in terms of how they played was in the, pre, in the preview show back in the summer we did, we both said that on the ball, going forwards, midfield, fantastic. They got a really good squad, um, a good team. But what we said was our concern with them is when they didn't have the depth in their squad for a big, long championship season and defensively, we were a bit concerned with would they be good enough. And I think now that's kind of come into fruition mm. in that they've had a few injuries, they haven't got the players to, to, to come in and you know, kind of steady the ship or to, 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 to come in for those injured players. And also that bad run is now going to a terrible run because yeah. they're defensively not good enough. Now, yes, West Brom were unbelievable. But Swansea defensively were all... I know you said you didn't want to say it and you wanted to focus on West Brom. But Swansea were all over the place at the back. Um, they made errors. They gave the ball away. That's, it was very un-Swansea-like um, on the ball, I thought. 
Um, I thought they gave the ball away a lot more than they usually do. Um, and I just thought defensively they were a bit sloppy. Um, and I'll go into a bit more detail later on with that. I think, um, I think so. The way, that, the way that they play is, is really pretty when it works. But the championship's not there to, to, be, to be played like that sometimes. And when you've got somebody like uh, Neil Warnock, Slavin Bilic... Bielsa, who mixes the games up and plays at a high tempo and plays at a, at a pace which which doesn't suit sides like Swansea. You know what I mean? Cause them their own problems. And I think on Saturday they were, you know what I mean? They were beaten by a, an excellent side on the day. You know what I mean? But like you said, the run that they're on is just is disastrous. And you know what I mean? They need to turn around very quickly because you know what I mean? That that the sides running away with the league, the sides running away at the top of the playoffs you know what I mean and the, the gap's going to be too big for everybody to, to close if we're not careful soon yeah indeed um, i just finish off by saying those three managers you just mentioned then uh, Bilic Warnock and Bielsa the one thing they've all got in common is they're very experienced so mm. when they come up against a side like Swansea or a Derby County who play out from the back they will split the defenders and they will press high because yeah. they adapt generally. I know Warnock I've criticised this year for not adapting his tactics. But generally, they'll, they'll come up with a plan to counteract what Swansea do. So what yeah. Cardiff tried to do in the Derby game was they tried to miss out the midfield. They just didn't do it very well. Um, but what they tried to do was miss out Swansea's midfield, hit the target man or hit the striker and then play off that. They just didn't do it very well. Um, and I just think Swansea need to dig in now over the next Christmas period. They've got to dig in and they've got to find points. They've got to come together as a group. And if that means they've got to be a bit more direct and not play the pretty football, they have to do that. Because if they go into the Christmas period and keep losing, they could be in the bloody relegation zone by the end mm. of January. And I don't, like I don't, say, want, like to see, I don't want to see Swansea go down. No, I agree. I, listen, listen, I agree. Listen, to play Middlesbrough on Saturday. Um, Five nil Middlesbrough. I know. Well, I know if Swansea bring their A game to the Liberty and they pass Middlesbrough off the park, they could beat Middlesbrough three, four, five easily, easily. But if they play like they did on Saturday, Middlesbrough will frustrate them. They'll play the game at their pace, and Swansea won't like the game at all, and the fans will hate. You know what I mean? So they've got to earn the right to play they can't just expect and wait things, for ha- wait things to happen unfortunately you know, it's not, it's not the, way that, the way of the world you've got to make things happen in the championships at the minute it's at a level where you've got to make things happen you can't uh, it takes no prisoner of them in the championship you've got to defend properly as well yeah as well, as well, apart from Leeds and probably West Brom normally um, probably do still let goals in by the way the odd one there's probably only Leeds who I can think who, who are keeping enough clean sheets to to win games, to, to yeah. guarantee a win. Spot on, mate, spot on. Um, so that's our three main featured games where we go into a bit more detail. Now we're going to go through the rest of the games, starting with Friday night, Millwall 2, Forest 2. I enjoyed this side, to be fair. I thought it was a great game. Um, I've, um, I've slagged Sky off for, for having um, the so-called same, biggest... Same team bigger, bigger, bit, Yeah, so I was interested to see Millwall because... Um, you know what I mean? Our our friend, uh, Jed Wallace, you know what I mean? Oh, and to be fair, every time he got the ball, I, I was just excited. I wanted I wanted, I wanted, him to get the ball all the time because he was just making things happen. But I thought Millwall first half were, were dominant. I thought they were excellent. I thought Gary Rowe got his tactics spot on. He frustrated um, Nottingham Forest. Um, they had enough clear cut chances to, to win the game. They, they took the lead through Williams, deserved will be so. And then at half time, whatever got said in the second half, uh, at half time, Forrest got the, the tactics spot on. You can't give Lewis Graben space in the box or he'll punish you. He said this about good 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 players and he got himself uh, obviously the equaliser on the hour and then, uh, well, I thought the way that the game went, uh, Amiobi's ball to him and he, he got the winner in the 88th minute and then, lo and behold, Millwall didn't uh, didn't give up and, and got a, an equaliser in the, in the 92nd minute by a... The commentators were saying it was a it was a fumble by the goalkeeper but I thought it was a decent save and it was a decent save but he didn't push it out wide and push it straight back in the danger and I know Brian was there to, to smash it home and you know what I mean I just thought probably a, a draw was a, a fair result on the on the, on the the day because uh, I thought the first half I thought Millwall deserved the win the second half I thought Forrest was the better side so 
overall, I thought was a was a fair and, and very entertaining two all draw. Yeah, I think um, since Gary Rowett's come in, Millwall have been very, very good. They're in, unbeaten in five games now, and I think they could have easily won this really yeah. on another day. Um, I'd say. I don't know why Lewis Grabham's on the bench, I've got to say. Um, no, well, I don't, carrying I don't, I don't, a knock. Yeah, well, I even if he's signed, know. you know what I mean? You, you, worry, you worry there is, if he's injured, you're going to bring, bring him on in early in the second half, so you're going to play him just as much as you yeah. are if you started the game. Because if you started him, you bring him off at half-time, if he's well, done his job. So. Yeah, it's bizarre. And then they looked, they struggled without him. They looked toothless without him. Like yeah, when he came on, it changed the game. He looked dangerous. He well, scored. Just Simps- and... Not just him, as well. Like other players looked dangerous because he was yeah. on the pitch. Because other players know how he plays, and and the, and the whole team is revolved around him. Abi Obi, Joe Lolly, these kind of players. You know, what I mean? these even... kind of players need to play. You know what I mean? So, and when these kind of players play, Forest look a better side. Yeah. But when when they don't play, they're going to struggle because the players who who play instead are not as good as the Lewis Gobbins of this world and. You know what I mean? If I'm a Middlesbrough fan, and if I saw Nottingham Forest team sheet on Tuesday night and Lewis Goblin's on the bench, I'm delighted. I'm delighted because he can't hurt us on the bench. He can hurt us when he's starting, though. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I barely heard Joe Lolly or Ami Obi's name before Grabham come on, which tells you everything you need to know, really. I totally agree. Um, but however, I think Millwall deserve a tremendous amount of credit because I thought yeah, they yeah, were yeah. very, very good in the first half. So I don't want to take away from that. But no, but, but I think they'll say it also gives them a little bit of a confidence boost to see him not in the side. So yeah, definitely. Rather you know gives them bench, a, if you're if you're a centre half, if you're, if you're a centre half and you're you're coming up to a, a game thinking how do I stop Lewis Grabbin? How do I stop him? And then all of a sudden, he's not playing. You're thinking, brilliant. You, you, you raise 5 10% already. So. Absolutely, mate. That's the way it is, isn't it? Mm. Um, so next up, you had uh, Huddersfield nil leads two. Uh, Huddersfield are on a bit of a bad run side, but when you're playing against a, a side as, as relentless as a West Brom and the Leeds, you know what I mean? The same as West Brom, that Leeds are just relentless at the minute. They're, they're keeping clean sheets, they're creating chances, they're scoring goals. This is 2-0 going on five. You know what I mean? Badford had a couple of chances. Um, Klitsch hit the post off a fantastic free kick in the first half. Uh, Alioski's goal was... Oh, oh, top, draw. top draw. Um, and um, Hernandez's goal was an excellent finish. So... All in all, I didn't really see Huddersfield causing Leeds any problems. I thought it was a local derby. Loads of guts, loads of thunder. I thought Huddersfield tried. They'd give it, give it their all, but it came across a, a Leeds side who, who just had far too much for them on the day and, um, and came off with a, a deserved victory. And they go, they, what is it saying? They, they go marching on because they just nobody can touch them at the minute. Apart yeah. from a West Brom, potentially. But obviously, they've already played them at, at Ellen Road. Yeah. Um, you know, it's obviously is a very special goal. Um, it's a very difficult technique, which I'll I'll talk about a bit more in detail later on. Um, Leeds just look just dangerous with every attack. They just they play such good football. Um, and I've said before, I'm a huge fan of uh, of the manager Bielsa. I just I think he's fantastic. He's entertaining. Gets better, better. Well, he gets better and better. Si. He's just he's, he he gets better and better. He's you know what I mean? I'm and I'm liking that he doesn't do post match interviews at the minute. That he's he's happy with his side, pushing on the way that he wants him, and he takes the pressure off himself. And I don't know. He's got he's got everything. He's got everything going his way at the minute. And you know what I mean? And uh, you know what I mean? Uh, Middlesbrough fans won't like me for saying this, but and the Cardiff fans probably won't as well. But I hope Leeds go up because they deserve it. You know what I mean? Because the way that they play and for him and. For a couple of other players, and the way that the way that things are going, because teams deserve a little bit of recognition, and this show has been great and great for us to be able to say how well teams are playing and Leeds are they're absolutely on fire. The chances they create, like on a on a gamely basis, are scary. Yeah, I think um, the one thing I'd say about Bielsa, though, which I found interesting, is uh, Nick Attire still hasn't started a game in the league. Um, and I read a thing saying Arsenal is still not going to call him, recall him from his loan despite that. But it's interesting because you'd think there was that period where Bamford wasn't scoring, wasn't playing very well. And 
they just didn't seem to want to give Nikataya that start. And he's, you know, he's scored some goals. He's he's looked good when he's come on. They just don't seem to fancy him as a starter, which I find interesting. Not a bad player to have coming off the bench, though. No, I totally agree. Well, I think that's the thing that they've got strength and depth, um, and and that's all you can ask for. So you can only ask for. Um, your players to go out and do the jobs and it must be so frustrating for some of the Leeds players to not be given an opportunity because the team's playing that well how can you change your, how can you change your team yeah it's an interesting one but um, but then I think he had the chance didn't he when uh, Bamford was struggling for, for, for goals he and, was, he was and he stuck with him and he's scoring shows, goals again shows, so. shows, shows, shows the, the kind of manager he is that he knows his players, he sees them on a daily basis. And there's us calling for Nick Attire to be given an opportunity because we see him coming on and scoring these goals. But he's stuck by his number nine and he's now getting the rewards because Paddy's leading the line really well. Chipping him with goals, didn't score Saturday, but chipping him with goals over the last month and, and pushed Leeds up clear of, uh, of third place now. Indeed, yeah, I agree. Uh, next up, Blackburn won Derby County nil. Um. <sighs> What else can we say about about, about Derby? Um, the travelling is just just awful, and you know, I mean, we've, we've, if they're not careful, if the manager's not careful, he's going to lose his job because of his away form, because he's putting himself under a lot of pressure with the way the, the way that with the way that he has to win the home games because he's just not travelling very well. I know Blackburn have got some good attacking players. I thought Armstrong's goal was was excellent, great finish, near post, top corner, really really good finish, but. You know, what I mean, not really anything really happened in the first half, and and the longer the game goes on, you know, Blackburn are going to create chances of the home side. The onus is on them, but you know, what I mean, apart from a disallowed goal in the second half of Derby, which was offside and, and rightly rightly chalked off, there was nothing really of note which happened for for Derby, which is really worrying and worrying for Wayne Rooney coming in because you know, what I mean, the Derby of all side, uh, they create chances, they score goals. That I don't, I don't see any of this. And, you know what I mean? It's 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 got to be concerning because you don't know which Derby side turning up, and we keep saying it's week in week out. At home, they're a different animal than they are away from home. Well, they just away from home, they just don't seem that free flowing team that played under Lampard last year. I totally um, and I just wonder, like I've been, we've been saying this now all season. Yeah. Rooney's coming in; he's on the bench now as well. He sat there, and I just think, how long will it be before the Derby board just say right enough's enough yeah. Rooney you take over and press that button Koku's gone because they won't they can't keep losing away from home no. because they're just going further and further down the table and they're not consistent enough to rely on their uh, home form well, even the home form side is better than the away form but it's not as consistent as it needs to be and, and to be fair the, the games that they are winning they're not really playing any of the top sides, you know what I mean? So, but it's not teams like... in and around them, and, and they're still losing the game. So it's 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 got to be concerning for everybody. Yeah, and it's not like uh, the you know it's not like their home ground is like some sort of fortress where they never lose. And is it you know do you know what I mean? No. That they're, they're yeah. uh, Pride they Park's are... a nice place. It's a nice place to go. It's not yeah. hostile. It's it's a nice place 16th to go. Sixteenth they are. Sixteenth, mm-hmm. and you know we're just talking about uh, you know Middlesbrough their target should be to stay above relegation. They're only two places, three places behind Derby. Birmingham, we said, you know, they're doing really, really well, having a great season. 13th, two places, three places ahead of Derby. Yeah. Um, we said Charlton, who had a fantastic start to the season. We're worried about them now. They're one yeah. place below Derby. Yeah. So, but, da- but, but Derby, though, their remit at the start of the season was definitely playoffs. Promotion. Definitely, definitely playoffs, playoffs at a minimum. So, you know, I mean, they're, they're, they are massively underachieving. And the Wayne Rooney factor, I think, has put even more pressure on the team. Yeah, it's put even more pressure on the manager, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Blackburn, I think, though, are, um, I really like them the way they play and they've got some great players going forward. Uh, yeah, so do I. But then I look at the league table and can't believe that they're, that they're stuck there in like 10th place because we've been. Didn't it, didn't it feel like there we always seem to be saying how well they play and they've won? Yeah, they've won again. So they've, they've won all these games, but they're still only tenth. You know what I mean? So it's bizarre, no? they've obviously had a bad run at the start. And if, you know I mean, saying that though, they're, they're, they're two players, two points out of the playoffs. So Blackburn fans will be delighted with that. Yeah, and the problem is with this league is is everyone beats everyone. So it's very yeah. difficult to 
judge when you just look at the results week in week out without looking at the league like I don't look at the league very often I won't look at the league properly until you know, I like I look, I'll look at it during the show just yeah. so I can talk about it whereas like personally if you like I won't look at it properly until probably February where I'll look at it then week in, like week in week out yeah see you know what, what the Cardiff need to do and who's going to win and this and that but like I only look at it side just to make sure it's not lying Right, I can tell you something, mate, and lay you into a little secret. It never lies. Never lies, mate, does it? Never lies. Never lies. Never lies. And just you heard, it, was, you heard it on this show. Never yeah, lies. no one else says it. <laughs> no one else says it. We're the only one no. break, breaking news now as well. Mm. Um, yellow, yellow ticket tape underneath. Yeah, I might, might get that little graphic going. The league just, doesn't lie. Just for the whole show. Just <laughs> yellow ticket tape. The league table doesn't lie. Yeah. Um, well, when the t-shirts come, that could be one of the first ones. Yeah. So, um, Fulham won Bristol. What were we just saying about anyone could beat anyone? Anyone could beat anyone. You know, if, there, if there was one game, I probably I, you would probably put your money on would be Fulham to win at home because they're strong, they create chances. And saying that though, the, probably the result for me doesn't reflect the performance and the chances creative. You know what I mean? Because I thought. Um, uh, some of the chances that Fulham Fulham missed, they hit the crossbar a couple of times. Um, uh, some of the saves from the goalkeeper were, were outstanding. You know, what I mean, they got in in and behind them quite a few times, and it was just you know, what I mean, twenty one shots on goal. You know, what I mean, sixty eight possession, sixty eight percent of possession. You know, what I mean, they they dominate the game of football, but lost. You know, Mitrovic missed a couple of a couple of sitters. Um, there was a a penalty decision, uh, which I'm going to go on about later on. Um, was as absolutely disastrous, you know what I mean, and um, and really cost Fulham dearly. But taking nothing away from Bristol City, that that they haven't had a great time over the last last few weeks. You know, I know they were, they, they won heavily last week against Huddersfield five two, but they'll have gone into this game probably expecting to lose, and you know what I mean, not thinking it was going to be a very easy game. But to go there just shows how strong Bristol City squad is because. Um, Scored a couple of good goals as well, Si. I thought the, 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 the build-up play for both balls as well was outstanding. So, you know what I mean? You can't take away Fulham's missed chances. Fulham's, that's Fulham's own responsibility and Fulham's downfall, not Bristol City. So, Bristol City, they got to Fulham and create the couple of chances they did and, and put them both away was, was excellent. And the longer the game went on, they were, they were probably expecting to hold out. And Ashley Williams throwing his body in front of, uh, in front of, the, in front of the, 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 the ground at times and, you know what I mean? He really relished the, the battle with Mitrovic. And, you know, Mitrovic missed, missed a couple of chances, but he, he shackled him really well at times. And the chances, what, what came through is, is, is the knockouts and the Kamaras. And, um, and the goalkeeper stood firm at, at, at times when he needed to. And they held on in the end. And it was a massive three points for them. Massive. Yeah, it's a big result for Bristol. I think, obviously, he's been a hellacious week for them as a club, as a team. I think it would be a very difficult, you know, uh, week, obviously, with what happened with um, Benicophobi's uh, daughter, um, so that's going to have an impact. You know, they're all, you know, their mates, their team. That's yeah. that would have had a huge impact on the morale and how everyone <coughs> felt. But equally, I would imagine it probably spurred them on to to go and get that result. You know, today, but it yeah. would have been a very difficult week. So to come and play a team of Fulham's quality and mm. win. At Fulham, yeah. I think is a very good result. Yeah, um, I think Fulham. You know, you gotta gotta take those chances. Um, yeah, well, we, said that, we said we said many side, missed we, chances. We said the times the times that Leeds have lost this season. You know, what I mean, you can't afford to miss a chance. Is what you do, and you know, what I mean, that, that you miss the chances early doors. You, you come back to rue those kind of chances, and the longer the game goes, it's desperation. And you know, what I mean, I, I do believe it was a penalty, which I'll talk about later on. But yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, easily. Yeah, you're then hanging on that that decision. A penalty, but you know what I mean. Where you put the chances to bed later on, it doesn't matter if it's a penalty or not. So, yeah, and there was some chances there which you know got to be taken at this level. You'd expect you know? you'd expect them to take them with, with the kind of players they've got. Well, Mitrovic on his own, you know, he should be yeah. he should be taking those chances. Yeah, um, totally agree. Sorry, mate. I would tell you the next game, but I've just gone off the screen and I can't find <laughs> can't find where um, it was. Whole stalk. There you go. Hull Stoke, 2-1 to Hull. Yeah, probably something I wasn't, uh, I didn't expect at half-time. I thought um, 
I thought uh, first half, well, especially the start, I thought Stoke were outstanding with um, with the start that they made. James McLean, brilliant cross, and Sam Vaux being Sam Vaux and of old and, 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 and heading the ball down. But I think we've said this, and I've said it earlier on about goals change games. After that, I thought Stoke, I thought Hull were outstanding. And it's like the goal changed the game for Stoke as well. That I think they thought that they're, that they'd done enough. And, and that's been a couple of times this season that they've, they've had that mentality. And Hull created a chance in the first half, didn't get um, any joy. But second half, but, um, whatever um, Grant McCann said at half time, especially to Jared Bowen, that he came out straight away and turned the game on its head within. What, 11 minutes and got himself two goals and two outstanding finishes as well and they create some chances Hull you know what I mean and, and they've uh, and they've put some uh, some sides to bed this season at, uh, at the KC Stadium and, um, you know what I mean that they, they beat what Preston there 4-0 um, obviously they beat Stoke there again and you know what I mean there's only, there's only West Brom who's gone there and, and turned them over in the last couple of months and you know what I mean you know, if they can keep hold of Jared Bourne they'll have an opportunity to have a really successful season but you take his goals and you take Rizicki's goals out of it. You know what I mean? I'd, 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 I'd really worry for them, but you know what I mean? You can only judge them on current performances and, and, and with players that they've got in the side and and uh, and they certainly deserve to win on uh, on Saturday. The thing is with Jared Bowen, it's just like we were just saying about Grabham, is everybody looks dangerous when Bowen's on form and fit and firing. Everyone yeah. around him looks better. Um, yeah. I do question the mentality of the Stoke City players. I don't, so do like, I, I don't like to do it, but it's happened so many times this year. They just look fragile mentally. They don't seem strong and capable of like seeing out results. But I'm also, um, I'm also. Starting it was one nil. Let's make no mistake, Anne. Sorry to interrupt you, Ed. Right. It was one nil. It wasn't like they were three nil up. So yeah. they should be, you know, they should be playing and playing and playing and trying to yeah. get that second goal. And they mm. just kind of sat back. They didn't go forward or back. They're just there. Um, and they just, as you turn my phrase, my favourite phrase, it was a bit piss poor. Yeah, but I've said, side that I, I fully expect them to get, get out of relegation. But now I'm starting to question the mentality of the players and, and are they good enough to really get out of it? Have they got the fight and the desire to yeah. get out of where they're in? You know what I mean? Because let's not, let's not make no, no bones about it. They are they're in, in it deep. They are in it deep. And if they haven't got the fighting desire to get out of it, they ain't going to get out of it because teams aren't scared to, to go to Britannia. Teams aren't scared to play Stoke City at home. Yes, on paper, they've got some good players. But if you haven't got the heart, the, the, the fight and the desire to get out of this dogfight, they're going to be in it for the rest of the season and have they got the, the players to get out of it. How many of those players uh, just think, well, if we go down... I'll just sign for someone in the championship ship, or the Premier League. Ship. So I don't really, they make no difference to me. Exactly, because because they've done it before. Because yeah. they've done it for other teams and they'll do it again because they've got no heart and desire to, to stick it out. And that might sound that might sound tough and callous, but you know what I mean? It happens, unfortunately. Players are, players are in it the same as everyone else. And if they haven't got the fight of, like fans have got, just jump ship in January and let someone else take over and, and take your place and, and uh, teams can get out with the rubbish that you've left them in. Yeah, and they've got the players to, you know, those players should know and be nowhere near the bottom of the championship, but um, they just are. Jared Bowen, mate, awesome again. Oh, class, class. Class, and uh, will, he, will he stay there? I don't think so. We had no. a chat earlier on, and I just think, uh, uh, I just think that these kind of players, that they loved at these kind of clubs, but, you know what I mean, they've got a, um, they've got a, you know what I mean they've got to look at what's best for their football futures as well I still think he'd be perfect for Cardiff City oh you totally agree him and, uh, totally him and, agree. Him and Gratzel up front yeah, totally I think agree. that would suit the way that Harris likes to play with the target man and have yeah. Jared Bowen playing just off him would be nice yeah, uh, next totally up agree. Luton versus Wigan um, the longer this game, game, the longer this game went on, Si, I, I, I t- certainly didn't expect uh, anything but a Wigan win, and we're going to be struggling over the last, um, well, probably all season. But the longer this game went on, Kiefer Moore I thought was outstanding, scored a really good header, should have scored again in the second half. Um, but it just shows Luton's never say die attitude, and uh, he brings on Callum McManaman, equalises with a with a really good shot in the 87th minute, and um, and then Dunkley gets sent off for a. Probably more of a rugby tackle to get a second yellow card, and then uh, George Monker steps up and smashes in a great hit to, to to get the three points. And the celebration just 
just showed how much desire that, that these Luton players have to to get out of the relegation dogfight they're in. And you know what I mean? That you know, the part of me really wants Luton to get out of it because of how much they've showed so far in the championship. And you know what I mean? I was really pleased that they that they got the victory, but it just it just it just brings things in the championship even tighter because you know what I mean? We're gonna what in the relegation twenty second with sixteen points, Huddersfield just ahead of them, Luton are on twenty, but they've let forty one goals in. But scored twenty seven and you know what I mean they've scored ten more goals than Middlesbrough have and and they're below them and so it just shows how, how tight that league is. But I think uh, for me they fully deserve the three points overall and um but it's just how late in the game that um Wigan can't afford to not be able to see games out like like, like they're doing at the minute because eighty seven minutes one nil up, you just shut up shop and see the game out and they're just not good enough to do it. Yeah, I um it was interesting what Graham Jones said afterwards. He said, you earn the right to stay in the league on moments like today, um, referring to the comeback. And now, you know, let's not forget last week, Luton got smashed 7-0 by Brentford. Yeah, last week, yeah. So yeah. to come back, it's be 1-0 down with three minutes to go and come back and win, that shows a, the opposite to what we were just discussing about the Stoke players. It shows yeah. a tremendous amount of fight and heart to... Yeah. to to be able to, you know, never say die, and yeah. doesn't matter if there's only three minutes left, we're going to go and win this. Yeah, the sending offs helped obviously after the goal, but you know, it doesn't yeah. matter. It's, they've still had to go and grab it. Earn you look sometimes, Si. I think the, I think they've earned that with the, with the performances this season. Yeah, spot on. Uh, next up, QPR two, Preston nil. Anyone can beat anyone. Didn't see this coming as well, Si, but when you've got somebody um, like uh, Eze in your team, then you've, you've got an opportunity to to win a football match. You know what I mean? I thought his first goal was outstanding and his penalty, again, you know what I mean? How many times is he going to take this kind of penalty? You know, his penalty, his technique is slow run up, stop, keep the dives, put to, put to keep the wrong way, just making the goalkeeper look silly. And um, Eze's season so far, you know, it'll be interesting if they can keep hold of him, Si, because, um, you know what I mean? He scored, what, nine goals? So he's got a goal every two games so far this season. Uh, and he's just a, he's just a pure threat and an outlet every time he gets the ball. And without his goals, QPR wouldn't be half as good as they are. What Preston just outside the playoffs and QPR 14th in the league and they've had an excellent season. So it just shows how um, how how reliant they are on Naki Wells, Hugill, and Eze. Yeah, this was more like the Preston that I expected this year. Start of the season, yeah. This is what I yeah, predicted, totally and this is how yeah. I thought they would be. Um, yeah. And they obviously have made me look. Stupid all season, yeah. but I mean they were not great. I got to be honest. No, uh, but QPR were very good. Um, but QPR as well, you know, they've been in a rough run. So for them to pl- pull out a performance like this against the Preston team, who have been you know in form and doing well, big shout out to them. Yeah, totally agree. Uh, next up, Red in two, Birmingham three goals. Goals galore, and um, probably not something I've expected to see with since Mark Bones took over because they've been a lot more solid. You know what I mean? They've, they've scored goals and created chances, but um, you know I mean? You go 1-0 behind just before half-time through, through an own goal and get another own goal. Uh, weekend for own goals, but then they, they get themselves back in just before half-time. And I think after half-time, then you expect to go on and, and go and kick on and win the game. That's what I totally expected, but when you've got somebody to come and take a free kick, like uh, like Vela struck for... Um, for for Birmingham was just outstanding and um, you know I don't think he'll ever hit a better free kick than that and um, and I think he just set the tone and um, I've got to, I've got to say um, Jude Bellingham I thought was just out of this world again he obviously he, he played a big part in the first the first goal which was an own goal and and just he's just what sixteen going on thirty two and he's just outstanding out of this world and for a young boy to but he needs to we said this on the show that he needs, needs to stay there. Plays football in the championship. See the season out. Play fifty games and and then see where see what happens in the summer. Yeah, he needs to stay there, in my opinion. Until I think I said last week, till he's about nineteen, twenty. Play yeah. have hundred games under his belt, and then go and get that big move because yeah. otherwise it's just a waste. I thought yeah. Bella um, for Birmingham, not just the goal, but I thought generally yeah, he was, was outstanding. But when you when you when, when you when you score when you score a goal like that, you know what I mean, a free kick like that, you, you just know you're having a good game because his confidence yeah. to, to hit that from where he hit it from it was just outstanding. On the goalkeeper side as well, you know what I mean. You want it many many better than that. Yeah, and he wasn't even you know on the keeper's fault either. He was just no, it was just a good hit, good hit, yeah, good hit. Yeah, got to give credit where credit's due. 
Indeed. And then uh, finally, we got the Stephen Stephen Fletcher show with Sheffield Wednesday two, Brentford one. Yeah. To be fair, um, how he didn't score more than two, so was just yeah. beyond me because he, he he some of the chances that he scored were harder than the ones that he missed. And you know what I mean? When you've got a, a player like him and you've got Jordan Rhodes on the bench, you've got Adam Reach on the bench, who you bring on. You know what I mean? That they've they've got a they've got some talent in their squad, by the way. You know what I mean? And this is not this is not taking anything away from Brentford. They started the game, they went one 0 ahead. Better side, deserved to be ahead. I thought they were unlucky not to get something from the game, but um, over the last few weeks they've been a been a very good championship side. And but when a team's got somebody of the ilk of Stephen Fletcher up front, you're going to create chances. You're going to score goals. He's a he's a menace. He he, he takes the pressure off other players. And when you've got people and I've just named the substitutes, you've got Adam Reister coming on. You've got Jordan Rhodes coming on. You've you know what I mean. If you've got strength and depth of of players like that, then you're going to win more games and you're going to create a lot more chances. And uh, and Chef Weather are going to upset a lot of sides this season with the way that they play. Yeah, Jordan Rhodes was um, like the hot hot thing in the Premier League a few years back. You know, he was people he wanted him. He signed yeah. for ten, ten million quid. So I know I know how good the boy is. I, I've seen him week in week out, and the lad knows where the where the net is and scores goals and uh, is really effective in, at this level and. Um, you know what I mean, but I think he'll he'll flourish playing up front with Stephen Fletcher. But they, they both need to play in partnership and in tandem. And if he's on the bench, how is how is he going to score goals? Yeah, ridiculous handball. Um, ah, uh, well, I'm going to mention that later on. Yeah, uh, could, but yeah, a ridiculous decision to do it. I thought you just about to say it, took the word out of my mouth there. Kadeem Harris just causing problems. Just you know what I mean. That if you've got Kadeem Harris taking taking or having. Um, I didn't reach out the side, you know what I mean? It just shows how, how, how good a job he's doing. So, you know what I mean? Long may that continue because he's he's playing well, he's, he's growing with confidence. Teams are scared of him. And long may that continue because he's, he's took a step back to progress his career forward. And I, I'm all over people who do that. Yeah. Took a gamble on himself. I've got no, nothing but respect for that. And yeah, then totally agree. his cross for the, I think it was the second goal, was beautiful. Yeah, excellent. Excellent. And, uh, when you've got delivery from right and left, like Stephen Fletcher's got, he's going to score goals. Yeah, well, we've been saying that for the last few weeks, haven't we? If you put the ball in the box, he'll score goals. Yeah. Okay, so that's uh, that's all the games. So we'll uh, we'll go to our two for two, where myself and Andy pick two big performances, moments or players, and two nightmares from the weekend. So I can't remember what we started on last week. I think we started on the downs. So we'll start on the ups this week. Let's go with the positive start. Who you got for your first one, mate? Well, I just mentioned him there. So I've gone for Stephen Fletcher for his two goals. And not just his two goals, because his all-round performance on, on Saturday galvanised um, Sheffield Wednesday, got them back in the game. And just the way that he leads the line, takes the pressure off other players. And you know what I mean? He's an absolute menace. And, you know what I mean? And, and Sheffield Wednesday, if they can keep him fit and playing as well as he has, there, they've got an opportunity to fight those top two places. And, you know what I mean? Because if 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 those top two are going to be caught, it's going to be by a side with a player like Fletcher in it. Yeah, absolutely, mate. I couldn't agree more. I um, so I've gone for Arioski of Leeds just for that absolute goal. Yeah, 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 I goal, always yeah. have um, so much time for these types of goals because it's so hard mm-hmm. to control it on the volley coming yeah, out yeah. of the air like that and hitting it first time is very very difficult to do. And like I'm I was totally impressed. Agree. I was impressed with before I'd seen this goal. I was impressed with how Tomlin had controlled his. Yeah, yeah. Like when you compare the two, it's nothing, is it? You know? No, no. But yeah, and it's also the pressure as well. Side of, of, of times in the games, you know what I mean? Because he was under pressure to to hit that as well. You know what I mean? Mm. So lads were coming and flying out with the time off a corner. So you know what I mean? His composure and his technique was just outstanding. Yeah, spot on. <coughs> uh, so next, which one you got next, mate? Um, I've gone for uh, Pereira from West Brom because I can't let a performance like that go without um, saying how good it was because scoring goals, creating chances, you know what I mean? It's just, he's, he's a joy to have in the championship and how a Premier League team get, didn't get hold of this boy is, is beyond me but it then but then what would, what would I talk about? What would I rave about on a, yeah. on a night? You know what I mean? So it's just, uh, it's, it's a joy to watch and hopefully um, we can talk about him for, for a long time. He stays fit and he keeps on pulling performances like he is because if, if West Brom can keep him playing like he is, I can't see teams catching them up and and them not winning games because he just makes them tick. He 
You know what I mean? But then if teams do man mark him, I think he's good enough to to see defenders off. And if they do, then they're going to create more space for other players. So it'll be interesting how teams go about it. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Spot on. Uh, so I've gone for, um, well, actually, before I say who I went for, I just wanted to give like a little thing who I thought came into contention. So we had Luton for their late comeback. You had QPR back with the winning thread. Danny Ward uh, scored again off the bench. Stephen Fletcher, Lee Tomlin Steve was Bristol. excellent. Bristol City, you know, after what was a difficult week to to put in a performance like that, or, you know, deserve a big shout out. Yeah. Um, but I went with uh, Eze from QPR. He was just oh, fantastic. Show. Whole game. Yeah. The confidence and the just the balls of steel to take keep taking these penalties like that. And make you know, make no mistake, if he misses that penalty, I think there's like ten minutes to go and it's only one yeah. nil. So if he misses that, it gives the other team a lift and he's gotta, you know, he just strokes it in, he seals the game. And he was just incredible for the whole game. He was, you know, he's in good form. I totally agree, so. he's he's just, it, It's the arrogant side for me, it's, it's, but it's in a good way. You know what I mean? He, he, he handles it really well. And, you know what I mean? To take a penalty like that and to, and to score goals. And I just, he's, he's just, he's having a really good season. Long may it continue because QPR need it. They need all yeah. the help they can get. Yeah. And he's, you know, obviously he scored two as well. Um, so who you got for your first down, mate? Uh, my first down I've gone for Rico Henry for his handball against Sheffield Wednesday for Brentford I just thought it was just ridiculous you know what I mean the ball over the t- you've got to know where the man is and he didn't have a clue where his man was so the ball's come over the top and to stick his arm in an unnatural position it's just it's just stupidity and you know what I mean how he thought he was going to get away with it was just beyond me and you know what I mean the referee took his time he took a good few seconds to make that decision to probably understand that he, he, he hasn't balled it. Why has he unballed it? So give a penalty, and it's just it, got, it lets Jeff Wednesday back in the game, and these big decisions in, in in crucial times in games, and it's cost his side. I think the ref was thinking, "What the hell is he doing?" Yeah, I know. I just thought I probably he probably didn't, couldn't believe what he'd done. I, I couldn't watching it. So, um, so I've gone for. I struggled a bit with this one this week because. I've kind of gone for like I've given it to Grimes of Swansea. But I kind of nearly gave it to the whole Swansea defence as I thought they were as good as West Brom were. I thought. I totally Swansea agree. I, 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 did, I did think. I did think about. Shot. I did think about that. But, um, and I just you know like to, to turn my favourite phrase. I thought their defending was piss poor. Oh, I was all over um, shambolic. But I, I did give it to Grimes because I thought his error was which lets in Matt Phillips, whose yeah. assist assist by the way was sublime yeah, after he gets the ball. Um. But like he wasn't even good enough for a schoolboy error. It was that yeah. bad. It was totally you know, agree. Insult to schoolboys. Totally um, agree. Who you got for your next one? They do need to sort their defence out. Are they going to have yeah, big, 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 big problems? Yeah, totally agree. Um, a second one is Jeremy Simpson. So the referee who refereed Fulham against Bristol City. However, however, people judge the penalty decision. It was absolutely disgraceful decision. And how we, how we can't get that right is beyond me because. It's just so blatant, it's unbelievable, you know what I mean? And the way the game panned out, um, Fulham got beat 2-1, it just looks even worse a decision because it had a massive impact on the result. And, you know what I mean? It's just, it just baffles me sometimes that, that referees sometimes need help, of course they do. And it was just so blatant. And both linesmen will have been able to see um, how he cut across him from behind, from all angles, because the way that I watched it from a couple of angles, it was just so blatant, it was un- unbelievable. So, I can't let that decision go unnoticed. So he's he's got my second down. Yeah, there was no excuse for it. Like you say, the line, linesman awful. should have seen it. Um, awful decision. And it's, it's had an impact on the game. Um, mm. I've gone for the Fulham finishing uh, and Mitrovic, but more Fulham as a whole for their finishing because I just feel like if they had put, you know, they at this level, the quality they've got, they've got to be taking mm. at least one of those chances. Um, and it's cost them the game. You know, they, it shouldn't. It shouldn't matter that it was a blatant penalty because they had so many chances. They should yeah. have been out of sight. They shouldn't have just won. They should have been, you know, three, four ahead. They missed a lot of chances, and I feel like that's not good enough. Just like I said, it wasn't good yeah. enough when uh, Bamford was doing it or Leeds yeah, doing well, it. You can't. You can't have 20, 20 chances sign and only score one goal. It's not good enough. No, you cannot. And like I said, we're fair to everybody. Mm-hmm. So, to finish off now, we'll have a couple of questions. Then we'll have the, the 
fake Geordie bingo lingo. So I just have some questions. <laughs> Uh, right, you can send your questions for Andy every week to facebook.com slash acecastnation or Twitter at acecast underscore nation using the hashtag acenationarmy or email acenetworkcontact at gmail.com. Uh, so, first question. Oh, I'm very disappointed to say that Peaches did not send us a word association. Word association? She probably felt sorry for me. Yeah, I, I'm very disappointed. Been, I was been, enjoying them. It's been testing me out. She's, she's run out of words, maybe. Yeah, probably. I have. <laughs> so, uh, so, Gaz wants to know, uh, best goal you've ever witnessed firsthand, A, as a fan, and B, as a player? Um, uh, probably, it just goes hand in hand, so I'm just going to, I'm just going to name, it's just, it's just one for me, so it's uh, Ryan Giggs in the FA Cup against, uh, from Man United against Arsenal. You know what I mean? He was, just, he was, he was a hero of mine anyway, but, you know what I mean, to pick the ball up and to beat all those Arsenal players and, and then to finish the way that he did was just, you know what I mean, in a, in a high-profile game was just was just ridiculous. And You know what I mean? It's just, he's an outstanding footballer, but, you know what I mean, to, to watch the game live and to witness it um, was just even better. Sweet. What's, what's the best goal you've ever seen in a match you've been playing? Um, I don't know. I don't think it's. I don't think. I don't think sometimes, though, when when things happen in a game that I played in, that you take notice of how good a, how good a goal was. Do you know, yeah. you probably don't respect it. You don't probably don't respect it as as much as you should. Um, but probably, oh, probably live. Um, oh, there was there was there was a, there was one from Emerson. Uh, Emerson scored. It was away at Sunderland, and he's he's hit this he's hit this shot from about thirty five yards out. Middles won the game two one. Um, and um, in local derby, and oh god, how the net, how the net didn't smash in half is just beyond mm-hmm. me. I, I, I'm not, if there was a um, a speed camera behind it, I would love to know that you know, the speed of it because I've never seen anybody hit a ball so sweet. And he celebrated as he as he hit it. He just knew it was going in. And yeah, so I'd probably say that one. I wasn't I wasn't in, I was there at the game, but I wasn't in the squad, so I was I was in the stand, and you just knew straight away that it was going to be a goal when he hit it. So yeah, Emerson. Oh, okay, um, sorry. Slaven, Slaven, this must be Slaven Village. Slaven Village. Um, asks, who are the top three managers of all time in the Premier League and the Championship? So I think he means like separately. Um, so the Premier League, you've got to go, um, Mourinho's got to be up there. Um, Guardiola has got to be up there. And obviously Sir, Sir Alex Ferguson's got to be up there. And for me, I'm judging those on trophies, you know what I mean, the past, the present, the future, the way that, you know what I mean, that Fergie's toll of trophies is, is probably never going to be beaten by an individual manager. Um, the way that Pep gets his players playing um, and Jose deserves his credit for, for, for how he came over as a special one and, and did what he did, you know, I, I believe Klopp will be up there in the next couple of years, but on current performance and the way that of the three I've just named, I don't see any bigger than those three. The thing with um, those three as well is they all changed the way the Premier League played, like for their era. They changed how other teams approached playing. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. And I think, I think that that the tactics were spot on for that time. You know what I mean? I think Mourinho's been. Um, abused, slagged off for the way that he hasn't evolved his, his tactics, and you know what I mean. Guardiola's you know, we're struggling at the minute in certain games. So, you know what I mean? It's about evolving and, and, and changing. And, and, and one person I'm going to speak about in, in, in a second about the championship is obviously he's lost his job because he didn't evolve and didn't change. So, you know, I mean, what the, the championship, one of them, Neil Warnock is the most, is the most successful manager in the, in the championship ever because you know, results don't lie. Stats don't lie. You know what I mean? He's been promoted how many times and, um, and he's been there, he's wore the T-shirt. So, you know what I mean? For me, he's up there. I think Harry Redknapp's up there for what he's done in the Championship. You know what I mean? That He's, he's been like a, um, like a firewall of coming in and doing a job. Um, uh, and what I'm going to pick, which will probably surprise people, is, is Bielsa. And I'm going to pick him because it's a consistency over, over a couple of seasons now. Um, he's done it. And I hope he gets his reward now because of 
the, the way that I've just built them up because you know what I mean you can only be counted as successful if you get those rewards and you know what I mean you can't be successful unless you, you get the holy grail of promotion or, or uh, of, of, of getting promoted and you know what I mean Brian Robson was very successful in the championship he got promoted twice for Middlesbrough but um, for me Bielsa you know what I mean he's got he's got a huge club and if he gets that club promoted the, the world is oyster yeah, there was a report today that the owners of Paris Saint-Germain have up to, or have got a, a fairly big stake in Leeds now with the hope, with the look in towards if they get promoted, obviously giving them a massive, you know, taking over, yeah, yeah. which I thought was interesting because if they've got a load of money behind them, you know, it could, could, might not be long before we see Leeds back where they were, you know, in the Champions League and all that sort totally, of thing. Totally agree. So, totally agree. um Slavin also asks uh, top three players of the Premier League and the Championship of all time. Oh golly gosh! Um, um, I'm gonna. I'll start with the Championship because so, I'll go. I'll go Paul Merson. And uh, I said something last week about uh, on um, about being overrated. And I think my point was this point that I think every time he dropped out in the Championship, playing for Middlesbrough, playing for Portsmouth, that he did it. And it was that, um, probably then the expectation of going in the Premier League and, and kicking on and going to the next level. Do you know what I mean? That it was, so that I just explained in that one. But that, so he probably for me is, is one of the best players that's come out of the Championship because he's, he's been effective. He's got promoted how many times? Um, so he would certainly be up there. Um, championship players is, is interesting, interesting one because define someone who's, Jordan Rhodes has got to be up there because he's he's done it for Huddersfield, he's done it for Sheffield Wednesday, he's done it for Middlesbrough, so he's he scored goals regularly that regularly there. Um, I don't know if I'll probably find another one who's who's done it consistently, but um, you know, I mean, someone who's done it over the last couple of seasons, who's who's doing it now in the Championship is Jared Boyne. So I'd like to to see him finishing off on a on a high and probably never seeing the Championship again, either getting promoted this season with a the card of City or another football club and then getting the, in the Premier League and never seeing the Championship again which, which would be nice for him and great for his football career um, Premier League uh, the best of all time for me um, Ryan Giggs Alan Shearer um, Michael Owen you know what I mean and there's, and there's many more no many Ronaldo. more well not for me because he's, he's done it of course he has you know what I mean but Ryan Giggs scored in every Every single league season, I could have picked Frank Lampard as well. So you know what I mean. I didn't. I played with Michael Owen. Um, I could have picked Stephen Steve G, but you know what I mean. It's just Alan Shearer, record number of goals for, for Newcastle. So you know what I mean. There's just inundated with you know. It's so hard to pick three. So hard yeah, because I'm just named another another five who, who I could pick. But you know what I mean. I, I picked Ryan Giggs because he's my, one of my heroes, and the other two because they were centre forwards of my era. Yeah, it's it's subjective as well, isn't it? It's it's very yeah. difficult. Like I don't tell you these questions beforehand, so you're on the spot trying to pick three. Um, you know, you could have had in the championship. You could have had like a Craig Bellamy, who uh, whilst he only did it, yeah. you know, for a year, he he got Cardiff finally up. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you could do it on impact, or you do do it over like a, you know, doing it over a long period of time. It's very difficult, isn't it? Uh, what's the criteria? Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. Um, so but, then, make... then, then, but but then again, though, say si, like, I like it that I don't know because you know what I mean. It, it, it then it, it, your answers then become staged because you're expecting a question and you're yeah yeah. Oh, that's well, that's why I don't tell them to you. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's it's great. Well, I'm and prepared I... you. Nah, why? Why should Pre- I? Preparation's overrated. Yeah, overrated, mate. Yeah. Um. So the final question is: Who's the hardest championship player and Premier League player of all time? Um, hardest Premier League player I'll, I'll go Roy Keane and I'll go Roy Keane because it's just his desire to win his desire as a player as a manager as a coach he just he wanted to win everything in training apparently and I played against him a couple of times and, and it's just his desire was just second to none and I've never come across that um, anything like that you know what I mean and, 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 and I can imagine as a player he just doesn't let you um doesn't let you rest and rest on your laurels and just keep you on your toes all the time. Um, and one player who I did play with, um, well, I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick two. And I'm going to pick two players that I played with um, in the championship with both. So Nigel Pearson for Middlesbrough, 
Um, he was a little bit like Roy Keane, but probably not, a little less demanding. That he wanted to win everything when it came to a game that his standard was so high. Uh, it was just scary, and it was just it was just nice to be able to be on the same pitch as those kind of players and and kind of say Graham Kavanagh, so another captain who three captains there who just demand excellence from the players and um, obviously Cav, Cav wanted to better himself and when Cardiff got in the Premier League his high standards went even higher he was an international footballer and he just made the standards of training better he just made the standards of players better he just made the games even better and he made, he made the expectations even higher as well Yeah, can't argue with them mate can't argue with them at all and uh, to finish off we'll have the best segment on podcast, radio, TV anywhere the fake Geordie Bingo Lingo. Teach me about your culture. Well, I'm going to visit um, a famous people. So someone who, who I, I, know, I know pretty well, I would say. And he's obviously a, a big hit on TV and a big hit on uh, Gillette so- Soccer Saturday. So um, Chris Kamara. So, you know what I mean? I know he has his, um, he has his, his, his uh, followers. And, you know, he's a, he's a Middlesbrough boy. I know his family really well. And every time I see him in the area, I see him. At games, um, we always have a good chat about the, just the area because he's he's very proud of where he's come from, Thai si, si. and that's what I think I like from him that he doesn't forget his roots, uh, regardless that you know I know he lives in Leeds now, but he's a Middlesbrough born and bred boy and never forgets his family and his and his roots in his area and you know what I mean he's a he's a big hit in this area and this this part of the world and um, and we need all the help we can, we can get down here so <laughs> or up here so I, I should say um, but yeah Chris Kamara. Yeah, it's a good shout. Good shout, Cammy. Everyone loves Cammy. So, um, just to finish off, then you can follow Andy on Twitter at Andy Campbell thirty two. You can follow me at AceCast underscore Nation, and uh, you follow the show on Facebook dot com slash AceCast Nation. And uh, as I said at the start of the show, you can watch all our our previous shows, all our other podcasts and shows. Uh, in video format at youtube.com slash ace podcast nation audio at all podcast providers whether it's you know apple pods google pods spotify iheart radio all the all the big ones all the good ones we are there guys to help us grow best thing to do is leave comments on our posts leave comments on the videos really need that um subscribe to the youtube channel subscribe to your favorite podcast app and uh, just get involved in the conversation. Let us know what you like or you don't like. And uh, send Andy questions every week, which you always do. Guys, it's been a pleasure. Andy, it's been an absolute pleasure as usual, mate. Yeah, I loved, loved it, loved it, mate. Thank you very much. It's a good one. I've got no idea how long we were on for because <coughs> the one thing which my new software does is it doesn't tell me how long I've been. No, I don't, I don't know I, either. I think it was about the usual time. But Yeah, so do I. That's all right. Cool. Uh, right, cheers, and and Come guys, on. girls, people, thank you for watching. We'll see you next week.